All right, ladies and gentlemen, and they's and thems, whatever. <laughs> uh, I'm Nick Miles, I'm the director of events for the Walk Away Campaign. So we're gonna get started here. <laughs> We're gonna get started. I do wanna make an announcement. If you're sitting here in the front row, I ask that you hold before you go to the bathroom until the end of the event because you're gonna block the cameras when we're live streaming. Um, you can crawl across or just dip out that way, uh, but I would prefer you guys wait. If you're on this side, if you can go all the way around and then duck between that camera. Um, I have to read a disclaimer because you know the uh, left is out to get us. <coughs> The Walkaway Foundation, which is a 501c3, does not, su not support and endorse any direct candidate, organization, cause, or business that is in attendance and or speaking at this event today. With that, I would like to bring out the founder of the Walkaway Campaign, Brandon Strzok. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you all for coming. Oh, how am I, like, like literally I just have to stand still. He's like, you can't walk around. <laughs> okay, all right. Welcome to the Walk Away LGBT Culture War Town Hall 2023. Thanks for being here. I want to talk to you a little bit about why we're doing this and what has changed over the years. Um, for any of you who followed Walk Away for a while, um, we were doing town halls in 2019 for the LGBT community, for the black community, for the Hispanic community. We were actually about to do our first Jewish American town hall when COVID hit and we had to cancel that event in Florida. Uh, we're still going to do it. It's going to be happening. but. I've been reflecting about when we were doing walkaway LGBT town halls in 2019 versus today. Back then, we did, you know, we went to, we started in New York City, so it's kind of amazing that we're back doing this again here. But then we went to Los Angeles, we went to Chicago, we went to San Francisco. And back then, our message was pretty simple. Uh, if you're a member of the LGBT community, you can think for yourself, you can believe what you want to believe, you don't have to be a part of a monolith, you don't have to vote the way your community is telling you that you have to vote, you don't have to subscribe to the ideology and the belief system that you're being told to believe in by the left-wing news or by the, peop the powers that be that kind of control our community. That was our message just three or four years ago. Look how much has changed in just three or four short years. We're going to be talking about a lot of topics tonight, or today, but um, it's vastly different than where we, just the place that we were just a few years ago. We're now talking about things like encouraging young kids to transition and radical gender ideology and pronoun culture and so many things that I think have become absolutely insane uh, for those of us in this community. And I'm so glad to see so many heterosexual people here and parents here. It's, a, it's definitely, we have a mix because, yeah. Well, first of all, and let me say, because the audience at home probably can't, the, the, the live stream audience probably can't see you guys. So we actually have an amazing amount of LGBT people here tonight, but I'm glad to see that we do also have some heterosexual people here and probably some parents uh, for two reasons. Number one, uh, I think that we have to unite uh, together to fight the radical left. It's gonna take all of us coming together. This is not a niche issue. But sadly, I have to say, in addition to that, uh, these issues have become mainstream issues. These are no longer just sort of niche, uh, you know, specific issues to the LGBT community. This is now affecting your children's school curriculum. It's now affecting uh, the corporatization of, of pride. I mean, when we look, you can, Bud Light, Target, everything that we're seeing right now, this rainbow mafia agenda has sort of overtaken everything. And I, it, it's such a passion of mine to do outreach for minority communities. When I started Walkaway back in 2018, 
I had this mission that I wanted to bring a message of more freedom, more opportunity to minority communities, whether it be black, brown, LGBT, women, religious minorities, et cetera. And so it's a great honor and privilege for me to be able to do events like this and to try to liberate uh, the minority communities in this country from the stranglehold of the political left. And that's what I hope to do tonight, uh, today. Thank you so much for being here. So there's a few things I want to tell you before we get started. Um, we are, I'm, uh, raise your hand if you're aware that we've had a little trouble with Walk Away in the last couple of years. <laughs> anyway, okay. Heard a few rumors, did you? Um, yeah, so obviously it has not been the easiest couple of years. The Biden years have not been good to me or Walk Away. Um, but I'm not giving up, ever. I'm going to keep fighting. <laughs> I said since day one, I'm gonna ride this thing until the wheels fall off. Hopefully they don't. Hopefully we get to keep Walk Away going far into the future and reaching people and saving our country through this movement and this mission. Um, but we need everybody's help. I'm not gonna lie, uh, it's been a struggle. It's been very, very difficult to recover from everything that was done to us. So here's a few things that everyone can do to help, and we'll be talking about this a few times uh, throughout the night as we go. Number one, go to walkawayfoundation.org and sign up for our email list. One of the things that happened to us after January 6th, we were banned by our email services, we were banned by donor portals, we were banned by payment processors. We literally lost our ability to process our monthly recurring donors, and we lost our ability to email them and tell them that had happened. So people still thought they were supporting Walkaway and had no idea it wasn't happening and we couldn't connect with them. We're rebuilding from the ground up. So please go to walkawayfoundation.org, sign up for our email list so that we can continue to communicate with you far into the future. Number two, please consider becoming a monthly recurring supporter of the Walkaway Foundation. It's actually very simple and what I've been telling people is we would like to get 5,000 patriots in this country to commit to giving $10 a month between now and the end of 2024. If we could get 5,000 people to commit to giving $10 a month, we'd be in really good shape and pretty much close to back to where we were before all the damage and destruction. So please consider becoming a monthly recurring supporter of the Walkaway Foundation. And thank you, Jolyn. <laughs> Jolyn is one of our monthly recurring supporters. Thank you, we love you very much. And finally, uh, you probably all remember the amazing Walk Away campaign group with the incredible testimonials on Facebook that grew to over 511,000 people and tens of thousands in videos and, and written testimonials. Facebook banned the Walk Away campaign on January 8th of 2021, but we're back. And we're back with our own autonomous platform, which is called Walk Away Social. So you can go to, if you're an Android user or you're an iPhone user, you can go to your app store, load Walk Away Social. It takes 30 seconds to sign up. We already have thousands and thousands of people who have joined the, uh, rejoined the movement on the app. And we have hundreds of testimonials once again, video testimonials, written testimonials. It's, it's really amazing and you should be a part of it. So please load Walk Away Social, open it every day for five, 10 minutes while you're having coffee, watch a testimonial video, share it, share it on Facebook, Twitter, wherever you are, give it a like, give it a nice comment and encourage everyone you know to join Walkaway Social because we're back. But this time it's not owned by Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> it's owned by me. <laughs> So with that, let's kick this, uh, this event off because we have an amazing conversation we're gonna have today with some really, really incredible people in the LGBT community. Um, as I said, when we were promoting this event, I think the best way to fight the radical LGBTQIA plus community is with LGBT icons. People who have walked away from the left who are in this community who are gonna stand up and say, we no longer, this community no longer represents me, they don't speak for me, and we're gonna stand up and we're gonna fight back against the radical left from the inside out. So with that, I'd like to introduce to you uh, our first panelist, Marcus Deep. YouTuber. Yeah. 
Walkaway All-Star and content creator Mike Harlow. <laughs> you look like a little reindeer prancing in here. <laughs> um, uh, TikTok influencer Melissa Vitelli. And finally, uh, the New York chapter leader of Gays Against Groomers, Rachel Magay. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Hi. Hello, everyone. Mic's on? Nope. Mic not on? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Is yours on? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, yeah, out, though. Okay, we're stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On. You're good. Okay, great. Check, check. Perfect. All right, so I want to kick off the conversation tonight. Um, one of the first questions I want to ask everybody on the panel, um, this is a question that I've asked many people on the left for years, and I've never gotten a successful answer, so I'll throw it out to you guys. What is the definition of the word queer? And why is the LGBTQIA plus left embracing this term? Mental illness. <laughs> no, it's literally right there in the definition. If you look it up in the dictionary, I'm sure they're on their way to sanitize that right now, but it says abnormal, suspicious, mentally unbalanced, deranged, and that's what they are. Look at them. They live up to the definition quite well, but I think if you can get just one thing from everything we're going to talk about today is that gay people are not queer people. Gay people are not LGBT, XYZ, LMNOP, semicolon, ampersand, Batman sign people. <laughs> um, so it's disgusting, but I think it's very in line with everything that the ideology now stands for. Uh, I think the definition is actually strange, and that's an odd thing to call yourself a strange. Uh, if you want to be accepted as normal, why do you consider yourself strange? Uh, and I don't think it specifically defines any sexual attraction, which LGB is. Uh, being a lesbian woman is a woman who is attracted to other women. By the way, a woman is an adult female human. Uh, <laughs> and. <laughs> And being queer, I don't see how it's related when, and it's just a derogatory word, and I, I have nothing to do with that. I don't want anything to do with that word. I don't either. Um, and th to me, this started, this became kind of an issue in our community, I, I think around like 2000, I feel like everything started in 2015 when the Supreme Court decided marriage equality was going to be the law of the land. And for me, I, you know, I can only speak for myself, to me, that was sort of like a moment where I thought that we were crossing a finish line, and it was like a victorious moment. Like, okay, after all these years of, of struggle and battle for just you know basic equal rights, now suddenly we're hearing about all these different gender identities, and people are calling themselves queer, and if you object to being called queer, you're being attacked from within the community. Um, and that's, to me, when the first signs of sort of the radicalization of the LGBT left began. Anybody agree? It didn't have to. <laughs> I hate so much that people can look at gay marriage as sort of the beginning of all of this, and I could argue about why it didn't have to be that way. I, me personally, I just wanted to meet a nice man, maybe own some monogram towels, and now we're <laughs> being told that that means supporting uh, double mastectomies for 12-year-olds. She's wrong. And uh, why are they adding more letters to the acronym? I feel like everyone aimed to be equal at one point, and now it's just above equal. Everyone has to be put in a certain category, and it's for no reason, because all of us who are generally the same age, all we wanted was that marriage equality, no discrimination, and we got that. And that's why I think we're so fed up with what they're doing right now. Do you feel, in, t in the year 2023, do you feel a significant amount of homophobia in society that's even worth talking about? Not against. I don't want to say the word normal, <laughs> but not against the non-queer gays. Right. When, when we're the normal ones, there's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think what happened, as you, as you said, when, when we got those um, 
the rights uh, to marry, same-sex marriage, um, where we got this uh, equality that we fought for, then all other people who think they need to fight for uh, acceptance, they're creating their own victimhood, but they are jumping the wagon of, of us, of our success, and uh, like piggy bank or on, uh, on our movement, where we just wanted to be treated equal by society, to not be discriminated against at work. And what they want is that for everyone to, to bend their knee to their demands, uh, if you don't follow along with their agenda, delusion agenda, then you're a hater, you're a bigot, you're a homophobe, and all of that. We, we didn't want anything to do with that. It's, I see it as bullying, and I'm not a bully. I would, I would stand up against bullies, and that's what I'm doing now, and that's why I'm here today. Can you guys hear okay? Yeah. Sorry. Can you please Closer, look the closer. Okay. Closer? Yeah, just make sure right. you talk. Uh, to, talk I really have to, like, literally touch it for it. No, but this is too much. Can you, can you try to get it higher? All right, thanks. Uh, should I repeat what I said? <laughs> you get it? Right. Now we got it. Um, I feel too with the with the term queer. I personally believe that there's sort of this push to continue to make us seem marginalized to other people, and I feel like anything that can be done to present us as odd or abnormal or you know not uh, just any other productive you know, member of society to them is actually beneficial. Because, see, I've talked about this a lot. I, you, when, when you look at groups like the Human Rights Campaign, or mm. GLAAD, <laughs> yeah, or the NAACP in the black community, for example. Yeah, and this, this, this is happening all across the board in different minority communities. Um, these people are out of a job if they can't continue to convince the public and their donor base that these minority communities... And meanwhile, we're leaving our jobs to do this and bring awareness to people. Right, yeah. But it's, the, if they can't continue to fundraise, they're all out of a job. And if you look at the, the human rights campaign, for example, the top like 15 executives are making something like $500,000, $600,000, $700,000 a year to peddle fear uh, and misinformation to LGBT people and make us feel like we're... These are the people who create narratives like Florida's bill is a don't say gay bill. Which, they're pushing that lie, yeah. Exactly. And they're making their audience be as dumb as they are. I mean, right. uh, believing all these lies these people who say that the, the bill is called Don't Say Gay, never read it, because it doesn't say that. It says that you cannot teach sexuality and gender ideology to, to third grades. Right. That, Which means don't line. say straight either. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. But then when you mention HRC, I wanted to add a little, uh, a little point. Yes, they are fear more green, and they're, they called a state of emergency for the LGB because of the, of the bills that are being passed. Uh, these bills are there to protect children. It's not anti-LGB, and th this is a misinformation and a lie. And then their president, I think her name is uh, Kelly Johnson. I may be wrong. but uh, may, Of which group? Name? Of HRC, the president of HRC. Okay. Uh, was just in Congress. Uh, they, they, had a, they had a little uh, hearing about women, uh, biological women at women's sports. And then she gave, uh, this Kelly uh, said how uh, well, uh, many men, there was an article that many men uh, think they're going to beat Serena Williams and obviously nobody, like no average man can beat her. And then you have Riley Gaines who's standing up for women, biological women or women's sports saying, well, actually there were, there were one man who were 203rd place at the men, at the men's and uh, beat both her and Phoenix. So, you know, they're not even correct on the facts. Like she's coming out there saying no man can, no average man can beat Serena Williams and be called out immediately on her lie in front of Congress. So wow. this, is, this is the people who run HRC right. and okay. leading with these lies. Yeah. And this is who the media shows. Right. That's why half the country doesn't really know what's going on. Right. Oh, uh, I was going to say, I think if we look at why there is such an expanded focus on these gender identities and new ones that they're creating, you kind of have to remember LGBTQ is a couple of different things. It's an ideology. It's a religious cult. But it is also a business. It is an industry. It is an industry that seeks to recruit people into a cult. So, you know, if they were going to just try to groom kids into being gay, they probably wouldn't have much success with it. However, everybody has a gender, so that allows them to cast a wide net. Suddenly, instead of it just being about homosexuality, suddenly they're in the bathroom, they're in the locker room, they're in sports, they're in kindergarten classrooms. So it allows them access to gain a foothold in every facet of life. 
Well, especially now that we have so many genders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got a new it makes it two. even easier. Only two. <laughs> well, that was my next question. I want to go to Marcus. Uh, so, Marcus, you are transgender. Yes. I'm How a transsexual. <laughs> What's that? I'm a transsexual, not transgender. Okay, can you explain the difference? Yeah, so transgender is now an umbrella term and includes terms like non-binary, which is not a thing, and gender fluid, and you know, they say that you don't need gender dysphoria in order to be trans, you don't need to medically transition, so you can say that you're transgender, you can say that you're a woman, and that's the same as what I've gone through, um, and I don't believe in that, so I go with transsexual because that's the old-fashioned term, um, and that includes like people who medically transition and deal with gender dysphoria. So, yeah. I want to get into th this subject more thoroughly, a little bit like into this, but but I am curious for somebody who is. I, I'm assuming you probably experienced gender dysphoria. Is it dysmorphia or phoria? Dysphoria. Um, your whole life, you transitioned. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I have to assume that you feel like transitioning was the right choice for you. You're happy with who you are. How do you feel about, because that to me, the, the real hijacking, I think, is of the trans movement more than lesbian, gay, or, or bisexual. It's really the trans. How, how does that make you feel? Well, I think it's sad. I, 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 have to, I have to explain myself all the time, everywhere I go. And whenever I say, well, there's only two genders, they're like, well, well you. And I'm like, what about me? <laughs> what about me? I was born a girl, and now I live my life as a man. That's two genders, and I don't need any more. Right. So. And to that point, um, when we talk about the LGBT community and how this has become, as I was saying earlier, almost like a mainstream issue, which by the way is so weird. Do you think that's so weird? Because don't you feel like gay issues used to be just like, uh, it was kind of a subculture. We were just kind of off to the side doing our own thing. And now you walk into Target and it's literally just like pride everywhere. Well, that's <laughs> why, that's why there's such a focus on it because they need you to believe that, oh, thank you, darling. Um, <laughs> any, they need you to believe that anyone can be anything. Think about it, and it, regardless of whether you agree with the slogan they used to use or not. Think about it. When was the last time you heard the LGBT community say born this way? They don't believe that anymore. They believe anyone can be anything. That's a good point. I think they're full of good points. Yeah. No, it's a good point. I mean, I, it's also you and I have talked about too how, you know, the, before it used to be about how sexuality was so hot, it was hardwired. You know, it was like we were fighting to say, like, no, we didn't choose to be gay. We didn't choose this or whatever. If only. Yeah, but now, <laughs> but now they're basically pushing for this idea that, like, you can be attracted to trans people. You must be attracted to trans people. You're a bigot if you're not. So I guess sexuality isn't hardwired anymore, according to the left. No, that's the thing. All the letters. The ideology of every letter is at conflict with the ideology of every letter. It's all yeah, it's all contradicting itself. Uh, I mean, the, the word, uh, the letter B stands for bisexual. Bi is two. Right. So if you, <laughs> so if you bi, then what is pansexual? That's already uh, contradicting itself. Pansexual is someone who's attracted to everyone. Well, the, the two genders. They're greedy. I remember, by the way, when I was a liberal and I was getting in trouble for asking what pansexual meant, but that was back when there were two genders. Yeah. So they've changed the meaning of that. Yeah. Is there a place anymore for gay people in the LGBT community? Right here. Yes. Right here. Right here. I love that. Mikey and I talked about that. Mikey has done every walkaway LGBT town hall starting back in 2019 when we were doing that. And that's what we used to talk about a lot was just basically building our own community for LGBT people who don't want to subscribe to this ideology, don't want to be a part of it, and don't want to feel, to your point, bullied or pushed around about what we have to believe. Absolutely. Uh, the, I feel like uh, since as we, once again, we got our rights, we got our acceptance, so we got to the peak. Uh, everyone is cool with having, um, 
You know, we've seen kids who have same-sex parents at, at the schools, and that, for me, was good enough representation. We didn't need the indoctrination that is happening at schools. Uh, we see this pandering of all of this, and us gay people who just wanted to be, uh, to be let to live and let live, to, let, to be ourselves, uh, are now, you know, kind of like we are seeing our acceptance rolling back because of it, uh, and we gotta be, as spoken as much as possible against this agenda and against the hijack of our community and how they're using us as shields to get to the children, to indoctrinate to the children, to leading them down to a path of uh, uh, gender affirming care. Uh, and it, it, I think our spot, our, our place as LGBTs in this community, in the walkaway community, in the Gays Against Groomers community, at Low Cabin Republicans communities, all of these communities are for people for, from this community who are tired of what's happening and they want to do something about it. It's not just about like we need to create our own group to, to be able to, to mingle with each other or to, to, to share ideas, but we need to be more active because otherwise uh, it's going to be dangerous to us. Uh, we've we seen it happening. Uh, I see the right wing comments on my page and how people are rallying us all together in that group. And we have to be vocal and to say, no, no, I'm not part of this. I am disassociating myself from uh, the, L I call it the A to Z mafia. Uh, <laughs> so that's, what, that's, that's the room for the LGB. That's what the LGB should be doing again. We cannot sit comfortable with the rights we got. We have to be active again. I, I, I try to be really understanding about these sort of backlashes that come and go sometimes because I feel like I understand them. It's very frustrating. I, I think when, especially if you're, you know, if you're a straight person, you're a parent, you're raising kids in, in today's society, and this is constantly something, it's coming from every direction. It's coming from within the schools. It's coming from within the entertainment industry. Uh, it's coming from uh, the corporatization of, of all this. It's everywhere. And when I went to, to, to Target um, to check out their pride displays and stuff, I, I don't know if any of you, have any of you gone to Target and saw, okay. Yeah. It's not just t-shirts and hats and things like that. They're selling like pride gingerbread houses and toys and candy and all of this stuff. And I thought, I was like, is this like a Hansel and Gretel? Like we're literally like luring Actually. the kids in with candy and toys and so, and I can understand I can understand uh, people becoming frustrated and I think intolerant to a certain degree and I do understand the way that it affects even people like us that we do have to continue to I think speak out and say look please don't lump us all in into one category because there's a lot of us who are object and I don't even think it is us I don't think it's our community that is doing this most queer people are just bored straight people so <laughs> right <laughs> Liberal, liberal, so, so. Uh, Seriously, it's such a good point. I feel like most of the queer community or like the non-binary community, it's just awkward people who are like uncomfortable in their bodies. They have green hair, face piercings, and they're like, hmm, I, I, I find a social acceptance by calling myself a part of the LGBT community. So I'll just say that I'm gender fluid or non-binary or whatever any of these things mean. And they don't need to transition. So it's, it's very lazy of them. Yeah. <laughs> they, they get the same attention and validation from the general public, but they don't do the hard work yeah, right. <laughs> to go on cross-sex hormones and get surgeries. So. Well, but there was, I mean, there must have been a time where it wasn't so trendy or faddish to be transgender. I mean, I have to imagine your experience was not always easy and celebrated. Is that true? Yeah, it was hard for my family, especially, to get used to that now I live my life as a dude, even though they raised a girl. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's very depressing being trans. And gender dysphoria is a mental disorder, and that's not great. Like, <laughs> it doesn't feel that great to, to deal with. Um, I always, I'd like to kind of talk about that for a second because I, you know, we hear a lot of people, especially when it becomes a political discussion, talking about, you know, uh, tra being trans is a, is a mental illness or a mental disorder. To me, it sounds a little mean spirited, but you just said it yourself. So this is a, this is something you agree with. Yeah, I mean, gender dysphoria describes the discomfort. Dis it's a very big discomfort um, that makes someone transition. So it's the only mechanism that makes someone trans, and it's uncontrollable. So it's not a choice, because if you say it's not a mental disorder, then you're saying that you just choose to feel uncomfortable in your body, 
and tr then transition. So it's actually a way of, you know, explaining the whole thing. And also, you know, as you talked about, it, it really enhances this born this way argument, like we were born this way. So, yeah. Uh, Rachel, you were making the point a moment ago about some of the backlash that happens because of what's happening right now. And to me, it reminds me a lot of what happened in 2020 uh, with Black Lives Matter and what was going on in our country with all of the violence and destruction. And to me, I look at that and I think, and it's very easy to get baited into that feeling of anger because you start, you can, I think, get kind of caught up in that feeling of the division that I think they want us to feel. I mean, I definitely, I think a lot of people were starting to feel very exhausted with the topic of race and, and what we were expect, expected to accept about the topic of race in 2020 with Black Lives Matter. And I, I, I feel like it's the same sort of exhaustion people are feeling now with the LGBT community. I think people are very exhausted with what they're being asked to accept from our community. I 100% agree. Uh, we, see, uh, we see it pushed all across the board. Uh, it's not just Target, it's so many other companies that are, uh, just walk around New York City and you will see the pride flag just everywhere. And if it wasn't enough, now they also paved the, uh, the, the, the sidewalk outside of Stonewall. And if that was enough, then it's all over the subway. And if that wasn't enough, all over uh, social media, mainstream media, Hollywood, uh, the, 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 the federal government is pushing also all of that. that uh, we have Biden who been uh, publicly lied and said that gender affirming care is life saving and medically necessary for children. Uh, we have the assistant, uh, uh, of, uh, assistant of the health secretary, uh, Dr. Richard Levine, uh, saying out loud that uh, these lies as well. Uh, and we just, people are getting tired of it. We, do, we are such a small percentage of the population, the LGBT, we don't have to be spread out everywhere and celebrated like it's something that should be celebrated. Like, uh, it's just my sexual attraction. I don't see what there is to be proud of. Uh, what we, the reason we had the marches back then, it was for that acceptance, for to get that, uh, to get to the point where we have equal rights. Now, since we got it, I think we can dismantle these parades. We don't need it anymore. We right. don't need a whole month. We can have just one day. A whole month. No, we don't need it. We're good. We're yeah. really good. Uh, we can have just one day just to honor the people who actually fought for our rights back in uh, June 28 of 1969 uh, in Stonewall. And what they fought for, we got it. So let's just stop here and stop going after the children because that makes it worse. Yesterday, in New York City, they were chanting down the street. They, they had a, the, the drug march. I don't know wh when that one started. Uh, but they were the what chanting. March? What march? Ma uh, dr uh, drug, drugs. Uh, like drug, sorry, drug queens. Drug oh, I thought you said drug. No drug. I was like. <laughs> no, no, not pills. The drugs. march for drugs. That's tomorrow. Yeah, for, it, it I, looked, I wouldn't be surprised like at this they point. They all look like they were drugs. They, like, they look like they're zombies. But they were. They're all like, you know, they were drug queens and drug kings. And they were marching down the streets. We're here, we're queer, and we're coming after your children. Yeah. So are you, they t they're denying that, we, that they're going after the children one yet, but then they're actually admitting that they're going after the children. So which one is it? Um, <laughs> sorry. So, yeah, people are done with it, especially parents are done with it. Parents are going to uh, board, uh, school board meetings and making protests because they don't want the kids to be indoctrinated with the LGBTQIZ mafia. Uh, I posted yeah. that video that you're talking about. So it's, it's what was it? It's a, it's a pride march? Is that what it's, it was? It's one of the pride marches, I guess. It's, it, it, where was it? Yeah, where was it? Where, where was it? I think in New Chicago? York City. Oh, no, no, it was in New York City. Oh, great. It was New York amongst no, no. us. Okay. <laughs> it looks like Brooklyn, but uh, I, so but I yeah. don't have the actual information for you. But I will, I'll let me look it up. It was a Someone group of. It was a group of people. Um, they they were marching. They were very quite clearly saying, "We're here. We're queer. We're here to." We're, we're coming, coming for, for your children. children. Right. Do you want me to play it? So, I, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do want you to play it. But before you do, I'll just say I, I posted it and I said, you know, it's time for the LGBT right and the LGBTQIA plus left to get a divorce. It's, it's time for us to get a divorce. And, and uh, people were reacting to my post, people on the left, and they were like, it was obviously a joke. They were obviously just like poking fun at what the right says about them, whatever. I'm like, that's not a joke. And That's it's not it. the first time they've said it. They put on a, an entire show tune about it. Right. 
Yeah, the gay oh. men's chorus of San Francisco yes. literally did a whole song called, said, that was called We're Coming for Your Children. Yes. That was in uh, New York City, the drug march. Uh, yesterday, it started at Tompkins Square Park so, uh, and make its way through the East Village to Stonewall. So it was right here in Long Do you have it? I ha yeah. Uh, I first wanted to look up the location, but... Uh, put, put your microphone up to the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. We're here. We're They're queer. proud of it, that they're coming for your children. Yeah. Now, obviously, I'm assuming, I hope that they were doing it as a satire. It's all funny for them, right? <coughs> oh, here we are, coming for your children. They literally do come for the children. The, yeah. the teachers are indoctrinated children behind, behind the parents' knowledge about this stuff. Yeah. Parents have to find out, to fight to find out why they're actually being indoctrinated the children with the, the, the pornography uh, books that they are g been given to children. Uh, this drugs, uh, the drug queen story hour that is happening at schools and libraries. Oh. Yeah, we have your whole group that is actually protesting all of these in New York City. Thank you for that. <laughs> Did any of you see the footage I put out the other day of Mikey and I going to the library? Yeah. So, yeah public library in New York City and they literally wouldn't let us inside because they were just they were profiling people one by one there was like a 14 year old boy who had an infowars shirt on and he went to the library with his list of books like required reading books that his teacher gave him and they would not let him in the library to get his books because it was drag queen story hour and he was wearing an infowars shirt but then they were picking and choosing they're like you can go in you can go in and certainly all the kids could go in they didn't stop anybody with kids oh and notice how no one can see what's happening inside. So uh, the last time that I'd gone to a uh, protest for Drag Queen Story Hour, they had all the windows boarded up. Yeah. This one, they won't let anyone inside. Have you ever in your life heard of something for children that's behind closed doors and no one Don't can look. know? Yeah. 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 But I think. But that I think what Rachel was with saying. A fetish. What's yeah. that? That is held by a man with a fetish. Yeah. Um, At the end of the day, that's what it is. But I think what Rachel was saying, it really goes to show the difference between queer and people like us. Because everything that they are doing, and I'm sur I hope truly at some point that even gay people who are on the left will wake up to this and realize that what they are pushing is in direct opposition to everything that won us our equality. It would have been incomprehensible to us say something like we're going after your children or the things that they're doing now. Just the word queer itself. How many decades upon decades did it take gay people to get people to understand we're not queer, we're not crazy or, well, we're crazy, but not for being gay. Um, you can't say that being gay is just a normal, ordinary thing and then call yourself queer. Right. I think there's a, f a very big difference between tolerance and acceptance. And I think when we all came out, we just wanted to be tolerated. We didn't care. I still don't care about acceptance. Yeah. We got our equality, and that's that. Everybody wants to be accepted now. Right. That's where the problem lies. They want to be worshipped. Well, yeah, that's true. But all, I, all they need is tolerance. Right. Like, you can't hurt me. You can't, you know, discriminate against me. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, and even as a liberal, I actually felt that way because I remember leading up to 2015, I, I was like a big part of a lot of groups that were fighting for the marriage equality. And um, I always used to say, like, I don't need people to accept my marriage or celebrate my marriage. Uh, I just want to be able to get married. I just want to be able to go to City Hall, sign a contract like anyone else can do and uh, solidify my marriage. But I don't need anyone to be applauding it or celebrating it or anything like that but that's because we don't do that for straight people's marriage right yeah, <laughs> yeah. True. Um, I want to talk about pronoun culture um, uh. <laughs> oh and just so you guys know we're gonna do Q&A at the end too so we're gonna cover some topics but if you guys have any thoughts questions comments uh, when we're finished we'll have you guys line up and, and we'll take questions from everybody so it is a town hall you can be heard um, so with the pronoun culture um, I wrote, will we go along with this? I don't even know why I wrote that. No, we're not going to no. go. No. Yeah. no. <laughs> um, but I, okay, I wrote, what are our, what are our personal policies on this? I really want to know um, from other people. Like, if you meet somebody, 
and they say, um, you know, I use they, them pronouns, or I use ze, zer pronouns, or something like that, or I'm non-binary, what, do you, what is your policy? I Absolutely ask, not. I ask them what their name is. You know? Yeah, I'm gonna they don't the need name. to know what I call them behind their back. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't need to know what you call me behind my back. <laughs> That's it. But what about, what if you were in like a workplace scenario or something like that, and you had to use pronouns to have a conversation about somebody, what's Brand- your policy? Brandon said, I'll keep saying your name till I'm blue in the face. <laughs> That's, okay. That's it. Would you, like if somebody, sa- if somebody was clearly a biological female mm-hmm. and said, I use they, them pronouns, would, y- would you say she, she, her? I mean, my first thought was, how many personalities do you have? <laughs> <Right>. Fair. <laughs> um, I, I guess it depends on the situation. Uh, for me, it depends how much respect I have for that person. If they are being respectful to me, I, can, I may respect them. I may make a mistake, if it, as, as you said, that example, that it's clearly a woman, but she, go, she goes by they. I will probably un- unaccidentally make a mistake here or there. I uh, would also try to stick to name. Uh, but uh, when people ask me what's my pronouns, because obviously uh, people are confused by me. When I walk into ladies' restroom, many times people will be like, hey, this is the ladies' restroom. And I'm like, I know, I'm a woman. All good. Thank you for being alert. But uh, <laughs> I, I would say, so some people who ask me, I would say, just make a fucking guess and I'll correct you if you're wrong. Yeah. Ah. It's not the end of the I world. I love that. The whole misgender thing. Come on, I've been misgendered constantly and I'm not, you know, re- yelling at people for that. I've constantly been called a man, but I'm a woman, I'm a proud woman, I'm just a masculine woman. Uh, but I just... For me, it's laughable. For me, it's, it, it's a joke. Like, we were trying to escape from all these labels. I remember when I was tra- starting dating uh, girls in my teens, and, and I'm like, are you, are you a lesbian? And she was like, well, I don't want labels. You know, they, they didn't want, <laughs> I guess she was bi, but uh, it's, we, we try to escape, uh, escape from these labels, but now they want all the labels. Uh, I, I posted this video. Once again, I'm posting a lot, so you can go uh, follow my page, and, and you, you see everything that, everything that I'm sharing is on my page. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it took from a, from a TV show. Uh, I don't remember the name of it. Uh, but it's, it's like a group of people they're sitting on a table, and each one of them is introducing themselves with their name, with their sexual attraction, with their pronouns, with... And a bunch of other things, like a list of things. It's so boring. It's so boring. Like, uh, yeah, the, I don't care. I really don't care. Like, and yeah, let's just stick to names. It's, uh, it's so, go ahead. Uh, my answer, and I would recommend it would be everyone else's if somebody says they're non-binary pronouns. I have 10 answers. No, 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 absolutely not. <laughs> and I'll tell you why, because it, they do a very clever sleight of hand trick where they'll call non-binary trans. If non-binary were in a valid identity, they wouldn't need to call it by the name of another one um, to try to gain legitimacy for that. Non-binary is a political ideology. It is not, it is nothing. Um, and that's why they call it trans. Marcus, as you said, is a transsexual, is trans. He is my friend Marcus. That is my personal belief. He is a trans man. I understand there is a distinction. It's not one I care about. If somebody is they, then there are no they, thems. There's he, she, that's it. And I I don't have to indulge anyone's political ideology that represents everything I hate in the world. I, I agree with pretty much everything you said. I say I think there are two genders. I am more than happy if someone says, look, I was born female, but I now identify as male, or I was born male, I identify as female. I have no problem uh, changing to, to, as long as we're sticking within the binary, I'm totally fine with that. I just see it as, uh, just like with COVID, I see it the same as masking. I see it the same as you're trying to control me. You are, you are using your identity to try to control my speech, my behavior, and to try to, uh, to basically assert control. And Oh, that's such a good analogy because the masks were the gateway to everything with COVID. It seemed like something so small, it's just a piece of fabric. That let everything else through the door. That is what pronouns are. Exactly. And, and closing. Yeah. 
there are many connections there are many connections from the pandemic uh, to what we've seen with this uh, closing down the schools and letting all the children go on social media where they pushed all of that where in social media you have uh, people being celebrating uh, uh, you, you said, you said, Marcus, that it's it's something that you struggle with. It's not something that should be celebrated and marketed to young young girls like the tomboys. I'm, I'm, I joined Gays Against Rumors because I want to save the tomboys. These Woo! young tomboys, <laughs> these young tomboys are being influenced. Uh, s s most parents admit that it started during the pandemic when they were at home. Uh, when they ushered this whole uh, this whole control uh, uh, control grab. Uh, right. Uh, during then, and then now continue with this. There's a many correlation between them, between the two. Um, Marcus, go ahead. Yeah, I, I will never call a person by they, them, never, because it's disrespectful. <laughs> it's disrespectful to my experience and other people like me's experience. Like, you don't have gender dysphoria, you just want to control people. You, it's, it's like a fetish. You want other people to feel uncomfortable and you want to control them. And that has nothing to do with being trans. It has nothing to do with gender dysphoria or being gay, of course. Um, so I would never do it. It's, uh, it's very disrespectful. And I really, sorry. Uh, I, I really won't, and I think you have to take a hard line on the issue, because it is awkward and uncomfortable, especially if you're in a room full of people who sort of subscribe to this ideology and they support each other and they support the bullying culture about calling you a bigot. If you, but I don't care. I won't do it. I, I literally will not do it. I, I don't believe in hurting people's feelings. I don't believe in being mean just for the sake of being mean, but I don't think it's being mean. I mean, it's like if I can look at you and you're obviously a biological male or obviously a biological female um, and you want to be called by they them pronouns or something else I, I just I simply will not do it I won't the, the, that's because there's nothing wrong with being a woman so if you get offended if someone calls you she it says a lot about what you think about being a woman Point. Yeah. also they ask people their pronouns to make sure that you're part of the in-group that you're part of the cult and people, I think, go along with it to sort of show submission to it. So just say no. I want to actually piggyback on what Rachel said. Growing up, I was a tomboy. This is how I dress. This is how I like to look. This is how I feel comfortable. In today's climate, my mother would have to be forced to get me child aff gender affirmation care. When I don't want to be a boy. I am 100% comfortable being a woman. I just feel better this way. Right. So. Well... And I think with the, the non-binary people and sort of like this new trans spectrum, um, th they're actually very regressive in their attitudes about gender. You know, I mean, I think that if, because I always, I, I've always used the example when I was growing up, like in the 80s, you know, we had Boy George, we had David Bowie, we had all these different people, and it was perfectly acceptable. People, like gender bending wasn't really that controversial, and it was an expression that a lot of people um, engaged in as, as a part of their identity. <laughs> but now suddenly it's a medical condition. Like, being gender bending is something that like uh, requires medical care. When I was growing up, I just wanted to be Ziggy Stardust. <laughs> Today, they would have been like, okay, eat your hormones with your cereal, kid. <laughs> you are, sweetie. You are. And, and they're, all, they're all saying that, that gender is a social contract and that it's gender fluid and all of these things, yet they promote um, a permanent procedures for people who are going through this or people that believe they're born in the wrong body or, or just being a masculine woman or feminine man. I believe that every human being has both femininity and masculinity just in different levels. Because I've seen the, mo I, I'm very butch, I'm a butch lesbian obviously, it, it goes without saying, but I have my feminine side and I, I, I've changed through my life with my, ex uh, the expression of my masculinity, it changed. So to think that uh, I, I should be, as you said, uh, these kids today, the, the, non, the gender non-conforming kids of today have been convinced that they are basically born in the wrong body and they need to immediately go on puberty blockers. Thank you for your shirt today, Marcus. Uh, mm -hmm. 
it, it says, uh, children cannot consent to puberty blockers. Woo. Puberty blockers is chemical castration. There's a lifelong effect that, uh, that happens to your body, to the organs that are developing during puberty. When you block in that puberty, uh, Dr. Richard Levine that I mentioned earlier, they said it, it's safe and reversible. That's a lie, it's not safe and reversible. So once again, they keep contradicting themselves. Which one is it? Is gender is fluid and uh, it's a social contrast, or you have to butcher your body parts in order to fit in? Right. Which one is it? Yeah. And uh, Marcus, are you able to speak to that about the, because we do get a lot of information where they say, oh, it's uh, the puberty blockers or hormones, these things are reversible, people can change their mind, it's not that big of a deal. Can you talk about that? Yeah, it, it's not true. We actually don't really give puberty blockers to children who go through precocious puberty anymore. Like, we're really careful about doing that. And these are not trans kids, right? Um, so if there's, a, if there's a lot of side effects for these kids who actually physically need them, why are there no side effects for trans kids who are literally healthy? Like, I don't get it. Is so. precocious puberty early puberty? Is that what that means? Yeah, so uh, in the old days you would give like a seven-year-old girl puberty blockers because that's of course early to go through puberty, but now they're like, uh, maybe if, if the girl is five, right? They're very careful because there are plenty of side effects that are not reversible. Um, wow. Osteoporosis, being sterile, uh, underdeveloped genitals, um, and also like psychological depression, um, loss of IQ, <laughs> which is crazy. That explains it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's not safe and it's, it's not gonna be benefit any children. In, because of course, many of these children who claim to be trans are not, um, but even if they are, they will not benefit from, from the drugs later on in life. Um, if you see the, the trans activist Jazz Jennings, um, who transitioned when she was really young as a kid, she got complications um, when getting um, bottom surgery because she had an underdeveloped penis, um, so she c couldn't get the surgery that she wanted. And it's all because of puberty blockers. And she got four surgeries instead of just one. Um, and it's, it's, it's dangerous. It's, you can risk your life doing this. So yeah, it's not gonna benefit anyone. Yeah, and, the, and Jazz Jennings was kind of used as an example, I think, for the, the public of the benefit of transitioning early and how happy someone can be when they transition. And I haven't followed Jazz Jennings that closely, but I know now she's incredibly overweight, incredibly kind of regretful, I think, of a lot of the decisions that were made, and her surgeries have gone very badly. Yeah, she says, I never feel like myself ever. Wow. And then she's like, oh, I didn't mean it like that. Like, girl, that's what you meant. <laughs> wow. Can I ask you, so you're, you being trans, that's not at all the impression that I get from you or from people who are kind of more right-leaning transsexual people. Like, you seem very secure, very together. And I think that's the difference between an adult doing it and a child doing it. Yeah, because children cannot consent, and they cannot consent to doing all the things that I've done. I, I discovered that I was trans, or I could put my, like, my feelings into words when I was 16. And then from when I was 16 until I was 20, I didn't go on hormones. I didn't do anything else but like change my clothes and my hair. So I think that also says a lot. Like I, you know, when I was 20, I was like, okay, this is, this is gonna be the right choice for me. And I was right. But Jazz Jennings never got the opportunity to be a boy. Jazz got affirmed, like, uh, Jazz's parents saw her as a girl when she was only two years old, never got the opportunity, and now she doesn't have her male genitals, so she cannot go back. We're going to start seeing a lot more lawsuits, I think, I yeah. hope, from, I mean, now there's Layla Jane who is suing uh, that she, at 11, was told that she's transgender. Her breasts were removed at 13. And God, just the other day that we went to the library to protest Drag Queen Story Hour, uh, this leftist was talking to us, and I kept asking him, is, is it, will you say that it is wrong to voluntarily remove the breasts of a 13-year-old child? Nope. No answer. I, it just blows my mind, the things that are even up for debate today. Well, and I see these images all the time on social media, Twitter particularly, of 
teenage girls who have had double mastectomies and they're not just uh, it's the, the, where there's like the straight line scar across and there's no nipples it's like they've What removed, do they do with them? Yeah, but it's like they I swear they have a jar of nipples somewhere. <laughs> but they have the they've nipple re- collector comes at night. They've removed everything, and it to me I, that that like that is not a gender identity. I mean, that truly is mutilation. It's, it's a what mental happened? disorder. I mean, for someone to go through to do something of that sort, it must be a mental disorder. Something is not uh, right in your brain, and there's nothing wrong about it. Like it's not, you know, I'm not saying it as a derogatory word uh, for. Uh, to say, but also at the same time, it's not something that should be celebrated and not so accessible for young girls as 12 and 13. Transgenders used to have to go through like a whole psychological process to even be considered for a transition surgery. Right. And now they're just handing them out like candy. I, I've got one worse for you. I'm gonna make you all regret coming here right now. A surgery that they're doing now is called null surgery, where they give you a Barbie doll crotch. So my question, my point in bringing that up. Barbie or Ken? Does the, hip- <laughs> <laughs> does the Hippocratic Oath not even exist anymore? Right. What happened to do no harm? Yeah. What is the point of that? I don't want to know. They, they, no, but I they mean, lost it during the pandemic. The non-binary? That's when they were done with it. They're what? They were done with uh, that oath during the pandemic. That's when they were done with it. The doctors, yeah. the, the yeah. experts, the professionals, who are making a lot of money, by the way. Is one there a urethra the, or anything? Somewhere, I guess. Wow. I don't want to know where. Um, let's take a minute to tell our audience watching live at home just a quick reminder. Uh, you're probably seeing a QR code occasionally in the lower right-hand side of your screen. If you point your mobile device at that, uh, you can be directed to Walkaway Social. You can also just go to walkawaysocial.com. Uh, when you get to walkawaysocial.com, there'll be a pop-up. If you're an Android user or an, uh, an iPhone user, you can go to your app store, load the app, takes about 30 seconds. Sign up right now. We have thousands of people who've joined Walkaway Social. Uh, we have hundreds of people who are uploading their video and written testimonials about why they're walking away or why they walk with those who walk away. And we would love to have all of you out there join us. So please load Walkaway Social, join us. Uh, Also, please go to walkawayfoundation.org, sign up for our email list. And please consider being a monthly recurring supporter of the Walkaway Foundation. If we can get 5,000 patriots to give $10 a month between now and the end of next year, we'll be sitting pretty and we'll be able to travel around the country talking to college kids, talking to minority communities, black, brown, LGBT, religious minorities, etc., spreading our message that it's time to get everyone to walk away. We've got to save this country. I mean, we really do. You know, I know. I I think if what happened to me the last couple of years is not like perfectly painting the picture of what's at stake, uh, then you need to uh, to wake up because uh, this country needs saving. May may I point out real quick, by the way, just to mention the left tried to take Walkaway down and they could not. The federal government tried to take Walkaway down and they could not because this man is still standing. They're gonna come storming in right now, too. <laughs> That's my PTSD. I'm like, shh. Like a team of agents is gonna come storming through the door. Um, all right, so let's talk about the LGBTQIA plus indoctrination in schools, popular culture, social media, et cetera, drag queen story hour. We touched on this a little bit, but let's open it up a little bit more. Um, is it fair to say that the left is grooming kids? Yes. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see any LCR event that uh, grooming children. I don't see anything of the right side uh, of this country that is participating in it. The contrary, they're the one who passing the laws. The laws who are uh, in past uh, in 20 states so far uh, that banning gender affirming care, uh, that ban uh, drug queen sto- uh, well drug queen sexual performances to minors. Uh, that's the stuff that's being banned. So nobody's going after the adult trans. They have all the rights they, they have, uh, they need. Um, and we are, 
obviously, if you are someone who's standing up against it, the only side that can make a difference right now is the right, the right side, the right wing, uh, the, the right uh, wing candidate, you know, candidates and uh, and representative. So we gotta support them. We gotta keep them um, uh, informed of what's going on and active and passing legislations in our try to do it in, a, in the local level and in the state level, uh, but 100%, this is a, a left-wing propag propaganda that has been happening. And they're, you know, uh, as, as you said, uh, they used the black community in 2020, and now they're using the LGBT community in uh, 23. I think if there's any doubt about whether or not they're targeting kids and, and and specifically pushing this, their their message and their agenda on kids, like ask yourselves, why don't we ever hear about drag queen senior story hour? Why don't they Why don't they go read to senior citizens? You know, think of how many older people would love to have somebody come and read books to them. Why aren't drag queens going to read stories to older people? Or why don't we have senior citizens reading to kids? If anyone should, yeah. that would be great. Yeah. You know, we could also talk about the argument that parents have the right to do what they want with their kids. If you want to bring your child to Drag Queen Story Hour, go ahead. You pay for it, right. You pay for it, and you, that could be what you do. But parents have to watch what they're doing in schools. Because at the end of the day, if you don't know what's going on, this is exactly what's going on. Right. I was just saying, uh, that's very true, you know, that it is parents who are bringing these kids outside of schools. Um, and I think very often liberals, especially the types of liberals who are bringing their little kids to these things, they operate out of social pressure. So I think the only way to really make an impact beyond legislation or anything like that is we need to change the culture. We need to turn that social pressure around on them so they won't want to bring kids to it. You know, and Mikey and I have had some good debates uh, amongst each other on this issue too, because for a while I was like, obviously to me there's, you know, you, we've seen the videos of like the drag performances that kids are there where they're like in fishnets and like stripping and like hanging off a pole and like doing all this and, and, and teaching them how to twerk. Yeah, yeah. They're literally teaching the children how to twerk. And that's pretty cut and dry, I feel like. But you know, I've I've said to Mikey before, like, what what's the big deal about a drag queen reading a story, uh, reading a book uh, to a kid? Like, why? I, I to me, I'm like, why is that such a big thing? And you kind of changed my mind about it a little bit. When, well, tell them about what you said about kind of pushing the politics and the ideology. It is a delivery system. It is not about the drag queen. The drag is completely incidental. It is a delivery system for an ideology. Basically. Drag queen story hour is the syringe. Queer theory is the poison inside of it. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. It's you the were telling me yeah, it's the books that they're reading to them. It's the, it's the conversation that is being made after they're reading the books. They are teaching them that when they were born, the doctor made an assumption about their gender, and they actually can choose their gender. That's what they're teaching these three and four year old that they're doing this drug queen story. Hour. It's it it's not always sexual. It's ideological grooming is what it is. They're right. trying to capture children into this cult, and it gives them a loyal soldier for life. And why do kids even need to, to see drag queens in order, because if the argument is, well, then they can accept and, and see gay people, it's like really offensive to me. Why, why don't you go take your kids to the bank and, and talk to the gay guy working at the, yeah. the bank? Like, why do we need to see a man in a dress in order to respect gay people? Because That's not, offensive. Because it has never been about gay people. It is about indoctrinating them into this ideology. You were telling me recently about the drag queen's outfit and it had the message on it and what it said. I don't want to look or be cis. <laughs> and that was at an elementary school in New York for, I mean, they had to have been kindergartners if you look at the picture. A public school. In public school. They went with the attorney general of New York. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was hosted by the New York State. That's what's very strange too. If you ever look at, you know, if they, you can ever actually get in the room to see what, if they'll ever let you in there to see what they're actually doing. They're really creepy costumes too. Like if I was one of those people who thought everything is satanic, I would think this is pretty satanic. It's, it's spooky. <laughs> So uh, a lot of people are asking the question, this is being brought up a lot lately, should the L, G, and B separate from the T? Yes. Yes. So it's an interesting question. You said yes? Can we keep yeah. Marcus, though? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I say no. Yeah. Well, that's why, 
that's why it's good for us to have this conversation. But you say yes. I think it's a generational thing. Okay. Because there are people who are literally transgender and transsexual who have gone through what Marcus has gone through. They could stay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, any other person who just wakes up and say, oh, I'm a he today, I'm a she today, I'm a they today, um, it doesn't align with what we believe. Yeah. I would like to separate from the Q, I, A, anything, anything, Q and after, I'm, I'm absolutely ready to separate from. What's your opinion? I'm a proud LGB uh, 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 community uh, member. I, I think that the LGB, once again, I said at the beginning, I think uh, it's about sexual attraction, while uh, being trans is something completely different. Uh, it is uh, how you see yourself, your image of yourself. It has nothing to do with your sexual attraction. So I don't know why we were teamed up together to begin with. Some people would lie and say that it was because of Marsha P. Johnson, which actually only arrived an hour later to, to Stonewall after the riots were already started by Stormy De La Vere. And uh, was a, a fall down lesbian. drunk, by the way. <laughs> Fall down drunk. Yep. And a man. And yeah. he was is a man is a man <laughs> drunk. Drag He's not even trans. And then <laughs> what's going on there? Uh, and and I just don't see the, the reason that we are lumped in together in that group to begin with. Once again, uh, the rights that or the, the, the things that are value for, uh, valuable for the LGB are different from what trans people need. There's no correlation and I really don't understand why we were teamed up together. I have respect for transsexual like Marcus and I have other friends who are and it's not about you know excluding them from my community. It's not that I'm going against them. We're just two different groups and that's how I see it. Uh, but I definitely don't want anything to do with the, Q, the A to Z mafia, I call it. Yeah. It's everything, all the other letters that they're actually trying to get in. Let's talk about it. Trying to get pedophilia in it. They are normalizing pedophilia. This is also part of the, the push with gender ideology and sending a, a, a grown-ass man where, uh, uh, dressed provocatively as a woman. I don't understand why he cannot just go as the man that he is and read the books, why he has to put out on this show. Uh, but they are normalizing pedophilia. You have uh, John Hopkins uh, hired a professor, a trans professor, who are saying that we have to, do, you know, to protect the feelings of the maps, which is mi minor attracted person. They are, they are, yeah, they're telling you, they're telling you, sorry, I don't know if YouTube will let me say it, but they, they're telling you that you should think about the feelings of a pedophile and you shouldn't offend them. How do you feel about that? I think that we should purposely offend pedophiles. I'm never gonna call them maps. What the hell? They In my honest opinion, I think the LG should just start considering themselves the American community. We have American rights, and we shouldn't have to categorize ourselves anymore. Yeah, we are equal. Woo! We LG are equal to you and you. Isn't LGB is let's go Brandon? Yeah. So it just yeah. goes natural. Let's go Brandon. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I mean, I'm going to sound controversial, but I just, I've never, I never needed a community. I, I, I've never needed an LGBT community because yes, I'm trans and yes, I'm someone who looks like a guy who dates men, but I don't need a community with other people like me. I, I'm a part of the real world. Oh my God, it sounds so controversial. I don't care. <laughs> That's just my experience, right? So. Um, this might surprise some people. My answer is no. Uh, it, I'm very, very, very sympathetic to people who say we need to drop the T and all that because it never should have been put together to begin with. These things have nothing in common. However, I don't want to drop the T. I want to dismantle the entire alphabet. Yeah. And, and the thing is, transsexual people are not the problem. They have right. existed as long as every one of us in this room has been alive and there was no issue until now. The problem is this radical authoritarian ideology that seeks control of every single person. And the thing is, even if you got rid of the T, what would be left? We would still have queer theory, we would still have drag queen story hour, we would still have indoctrinating kids. So I think we really need each other and I am not going to just cast transsexual wrong thinkers to the side. We really need each other and screw their alphabet community. We're the wrong thinker community. Yeah. I, like it. I agree. I don't see any need to remove the T um, for, for the reason that you just said. I don't think that the problem that's that's taking place is 
transsexual. I, I have to get used to saying that. I, <laughs> um, I'm used to saying I transgender. I give you permission. <laughs> okay. <laughs> transsexual or transgender people, I think it's people who are calling themselves trans who aren't. And then I think that it's kind of just progressed now into people who identify as queer but can't explain to us what that means. They can explain what it's not. Well, it's not really gay, and it's not really not gay, and it's not really trans, but it's like, yeah, but what is it? Do you remember me asking that at the Vice panel? Um, okay. Yeah, they can't, no one can define what it is. And, uh, and then, of course, we have the two-spirit uh, community. <laughs> I think uh, they've invented some new letters just since we've been here. Yeah, probably. <laughs> no, I, I personally don't feel any need to get rid of the T, but I agree. It's uh, The rest of the letters are just a, a part of a political ideology, and that's what we need to separate ourselves from. Is, is pride necessary anymore? And uh, what do we make of pride today compared to what it used to be? I, I already said it. Uh, I think I'm uh, just going to emphasize that answer. I think we're done. Um, you could have just dropped our weapons, uh, you know, and called truth. At, uh, at 2015, was it, right? When it was legalized here in the US, uh, same-sex marriage and all other uh, equality that we were looking for. Uh, we, should, we should be done with pride. We don't need all this pandering every month before the month starts. All corporations are already changing their logos uh, and, all, and the windows out here in the, in the city. Um, and I, I find a little, there's, a, there's some hypocrisy with all of these also celebrities and, and everyone who is like, oh, we're, we're standing up for gay people, for the community, and at the same time, they are making money off of countries in the Middle East that throwing off gays off the roofs. So if we want to, right. the only pride that I see it is like we need to, f the, the way I look at that pride is that the, the fight for acceptance of gay people, of just let me be myself. That's all we wanted, right? So we're good here. Let's fight for pride in the Middle East. Yes. That's what we need to do. Right. right? We're done here. Let's do it there. Yeah. I'm so happy to hear you say that. I've been saying that for years. It's like, I think if you're an LGBT person living in America in the year 2023, you're literally the most privileged LGBT yeah. people who have ever lived in the history yeah. of humanity. And yet they still so desperately want to cling on to this idea of victimhood while doing absolutely nothing to help LGBT people around the globe who are actually legitimately suffering. Right. I'm supposed to be oppressed here, but when I go out of the country on vacation, I have to look up where I'm going. Right. Yeah. So where am I oppressed? Right. I don't really have a problem with the pride parades as long as they're, it's not, they're not doing anything illegal. I think they have every right to... to you know, throw these parades. Um, but I think it's weird. I'm not American, just so you know. I'm from Denmark, Europe. And what I think is weird is that you have Pride Month, but you don't have a Veteran Month. Like, why, why not switch, like, Veterans Day with Pride, right? I'm just wondering. We should celebrate the one day that we got marriage equality. There, there we is should month. celebrate the one day we got the marriage equality in 2015. And... Yeah. Call it a day, yeah. literally. Oh, it's not even Pride Month. Now there's uh, LGBT History Month is October, and there's uh, Trans what? Week, and let. Yup, it's is yes. It, oh, there's like a there's like list. a hundred fifty or something days. Yeah, the whole year. It's man. basically six months out of the year. Yeah, they've conquered the alphabet and the calendar. But by the way, there is there is a. <laughs> There um, is an actual month for the military, the people who serve right now, and the mili and the people who, or the personnel who served in the military. I'm not sure how it's called exactly, but it's in May. Okay. The the difference is that nobody knows of it. It's not. I don't see American flag being plastered all over uh, social media during that month. I don't see any acknowledgement and recognition for that. The importance of of the military and the people and uh, who fought for this freedom of the, in this country for the, the for our rights. Uh, so it's very, yeah, very insulting for American people. Uh, and I, I saw this, this girl saying, uh, I've, I've, I stood up, uh, what did I do? I deserve my, my flag. What did you do to your flag or something? And then you see a veteran who was wearing his uniform and, and, and have the American flag and all the, all the, the war pins or what they called. So, you know, in America, we're good with pride. We can let it go. Everyone is accepted. Uh, equal rights. All corporations love us. There's no discrimination anywhere. Where, where, is, where is that victimhood coming from? Who's, like, who's oppressing you in here that right. you need? It's you about narcissism, I feel like. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And control. 
again, control. And it's everywhere. I mean, especially if you, I moved to New York 20 some years ago. And when I first came here, Pride was very, it was like contained to Chelsea. You know, there, there were like a few streets in Chelsea. You might see some rainbow flags. I, I, I remember when a few corporations, and by the way, it wasn't like mainstream. It wasn't like you'd open a magazine or see it on television. You might go into a gay bar and see that like a beer brand had like a poster or, or like one of the little pull handles was like a rainbow flag for that weekend or something. You're like, oh, that's interesting. I kind of can't believe they did that. And now it's literally everywhere. It's everywhere. Rockefeller Center. Have you guys seen Rockefeller yeah. Center? Disgusting. It's like 900 pride flags. Looks like an occupied country. It does. <laughs> Cause it is. That's so good. <laughs> That's what it. Okay, you just you. Perfect. That's yeah. perfect the way you said because it's. I feel um, it's oppressive in a way. Yeah. You know, you just you you feel like you the 900 pride flags and the Empire State Building is a pride thing and Grand Central Station is a pride thing. The White House. The White House. The White House. The White House. The, the and we're pulling our boobs out at the White House uh, now. I, I didn't know we were allowed to do that. Like, we, that's what we should have done, I guess, when we were at the White House. We never get invited to the White House. <laughs> um, I, w I wanted to add, well, I used to like Pride. When it was one day back in the day, it was kind of fun because it felt like it was the one day when gay people were, like, marginally nicer somewhat. Now I can't take it. Um, no, but I think Pride, that word in itself, is such a perfect word for what they represent and the culture that they push on people. So I think if there were ever a time in human history in the era of TikTok and of narcissism everywhere that we need to reject pride as a concept, which is one of the seven deadly sins, we need humility month. We could all use a little humility. Yeah. Sign me up for the humility parade. <laughs> I'll just talk about how I like gained weight or something. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we only have a few more questions left and then we'll start taking questions from you guys. Uh, I think it's gonna, this should be a fun one. Uh, Trump and Biden, uh, who is best for the LGBT community? Wait, I thought we are not supposed to talk about it. <laughs> Oh. No, it's just your opinion. No, we're not endorsing candidates. We're asking a question. Trump versus Biden, sure. who's uh, best well, for the LGBTQ? So I'll, I'll tell you, my, my online name persona is Mage, which is Maga Gay. Mage. Uh, so I'm a... <laughs> I'm, I'm a... So I, I, I started uh, my, online, my social media activi activism uh, being a Trump supporter, so obviously Trump. Um, it just being, you know, I'm biased, but at the end of the day, Trump has never said anything against gay people. He is the first president. He's the first president to walk in the White House pro same sex marriage. He uh, had uh, Rick Grenell, which is an, uh, 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 sorry, uh, outspoken openly gay, gay, openly gay, sorry, I was looking for the word, no. openly gay man to be the ambassador of, the, uh, of Germany uh, while Trump was in or office. A cabinet member. And then, uh, yeah, so two years in Germany, and then he, uh, he nominated him as the acting director of the intelligence committee, and he was like one of his people uh, around him constantly. So if Trump was so much against gay people, why he likes Rick Grenell so much and, and trust with him so much that they launched together uh, the fight to decriminalize homosexuality around the world. I didn't see Biden do that. Right. They, uh, Rick Grenell also have launched with outspoken, uh, the outspoken Middle East, where they have actual uh, people in these areas trying to help out the gays run away and escape those countries and then uh, provide them resources and how they can try to fight it. Uh, so this is, this is why Trump obviously is way better for the gay community. Uh, the only thing that they can pin down on, on what he, he's done against the community is that he banned people from serving in the military while they're transitioning. Now you can all agree with that, we all agree on that. Uh, I hope you all agree on that, that it's a mental disorder being trust, right? So y if you've been in the military, and I have in Israel, you don't want people in the military that are mentally unstable. It's, it, you have to put the country first, and the reason that uh, it, people go into the military is because they need to be at the best of the best in order to protect uh, the freedoms of their country. Uh, so this is the only thing you can pinpoint against Trump uh, 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 
as being uh, against the community, uh, where we have Biden 50 years uh, of continuing saying how uh, marriage is only between a man and a woman on video many times. He op him and Obama opposed same-sex marriage only when it was uh, beneficial for them in the second term. Then they were right. um, uh, enabling 2015. So obviously the, the answer is Trump. And also Trump vowed right now as he's running for office, he vowed to uh, to fight this indoctrination, to, this uh, the gender ideology. So if you want to if you want to sit clean up, uh, Trump 2024. Okay. Um, for me, it's just that's my, as you said, my personal opinion. Right? Right. <laughs> not, not gays against no. Maggie, Rachel Maggie. Yeah. yeah. No, no, that's that's totally fine. Um, you know, for me, the, part of the whole reason I started Walk Away in the first place uh, is because I just I can't abide the fear mongering to minority communities. And some of it comes from within and some of it comes from leadership. Um, and when I see someone like Joe Biden just continuing to get behind his pulpit and, sh and share these these ideas like, you know, if you're if you're a trans woman of color, if you're in a member of the LGBT community, uh, you can't live safely. You can't you know, the right is out to get you. The right wants to suppress your rights. The right, your lives are in danger. That to me is that is the person who is not your friend. That that is the people who are not behind you. I, I would much rather. I've always said, you know, I would much rather deal with somebody who actually maybe is anti-gay but will say it to your yeah. face, yeah. Than, yeah. than the person who's like, oh no no no, I'm your friend. I'm your friend, and you know, let me just tell you, this person hates you, and this person hates you, and this is how you have to vote, and this is what you have to believe to be safe. These people are not your friends. Um, definitely picking Trump for anybody who knows me. Um, so, it besides everything that Rachel said, which is what I was going to say, so I have to switch my answer. Um, you can see by the way he ran his cabinet that he chose people based on their character. He's not picking people because they're black, because they're gay. The entire administration now is solely picked on race, uh, sexual orientation, and you can see how that's going. Identity politics. It's all identity politics, yeah. and Trump just wants Americans to be American. And that's and how, it, why we have Karine, what, what's her oh, name? Karine Jean-Pierre. Karine Jean-Pierre. Jean Jean and, and the They're beautiful, working. stunning woman, Rachel Levine. <laughs> Rachel. Freaking Fred Flintstone. What about that, what about that luggage, the, 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 the luggage uh, uh, robber? The luggage, the what was the luggage oh, guy's yeah. name? The luggage Damn, thief. <laughs> yeah, of course. Sam Rinsley. What the hell was that? Never forget, never forget. He's a non-binary man stealing luggage from like women and wearing their clothes. Chronically. Stunning and brave. You couldn't make this shit up if you tried. <laughs> You know, Diversity I think, is our strength. I think if Trump walked into this room right now, he would ask us all of our qualifications if we asked him for a job. He would yeah. look at you and say, oh, you're gay, you're hired. Right. I need you for a quota. Yeah. I was really disgusted when, uh, I'm always disgusted by the, the gay media, the LGBT media, any of them, the Advocate, Out Magazine, uh, Queer Tea, Gay News, like whatever. Pink but news. when... Uh, Biden brought Buttigieg, Buttigieg into his cabinet. They all said that he was the first openly gay person right, appointed that, that by a cabinet, and they completely erased Rick Grinnell like he didn't exist. Because Trump did not make a big deal about his sexuality. Disgusting. I know, but it's disgusting. There's no reason for it. Yeah. Were you just something? Um, I kind of, to be perfectly honest, want another choice in this one. You do. Yeah. Uh, you have one. I know. You have lots of choices. I know. Who, who, um. I don't think Trump can win this election. So I personally have become a little less fond of him this time. However, I think regardless, it always needs to be acknowledged what he did for gay people. He completely reshaped the Republican Party. I would have never become a Republican if not for him. And prior to 2016, I think sometimes Republicans and the right in general get stuck on ideas and they have feel like they have to keep going the way they've gone out of routine. So it felt like they got stuck in this position that they can't accept gay people, they can't be open to gay people, and Trump completely changed that. And, and it's clear in the vote, there was a 100% increase in the LGBT vote for Trump in 2020. It doubled. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I think that Trump c can win again. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I do. But I think it's going to depend on the people. I think it's going to depend on us. People have got to stop. Like, we've got to somehow get over what the government did to us when Biden took over because they instilled so much fear and so much oppression. And January 6th, of course, caused so many people to feel afraid and like they want to retreat. They don't want to speak up. They don't want to show up. Thank you for showing up. Woo! By the way, thank you. Because honestly, I never know anymore since January 6th. I'm like, oh God. I, I, I was backstage right before this and I was like, I was like, nobody's coming. Nobody's you coming. I always think that. I always think that. I know, but it's even worse since January 6th. But thank you for showing up. I mean, it's so important. And, um, and continue to show up. Yes. Continue to show up. And um, there's no, re I just, I respect your opinion, but I don't think you should, um, I don't think you should believe anybody who tells you that somebody cannot win. I think we just have to stand up and show up and make sure that th that, that person wins. That's what we have to if do. If we all change the mind of one person, we have double the vote. There you go. If you change the mind of one person, you can we can double the vote. I should mention I will vote for him, obviously, if he's the nominee. I would vote for a bottle of mustard over <laughs> Biden. <laughs> I will vote for him all day if he is the nominee. We will travel the country once again yeah. and win some votes. Yeah. I'm amazed that he um, he just kind of keeps on going, like even with these indictments and everything that's going on. It's like, and he never lets off. If, if he's afraid, he never shows it. And I, I just, I find that really remarkable. What about Bobby? Oh, yeah. What about Bobby? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Are you asking how we feel about Bobby? Yeah, he's got some of the most progressive politics there is. Yeah. Um, I mean, I personally would want to find out more, but it, it's, I, I don't see a lot of appeal there at this time. I mean, I can say. Yeah. Anyone's no, no, no. better than Biden. Yeah, it, I, agreed. Um, I see bottle this, of water would be better than Biden. There's there's a huge split that has happened. I mean, we've all seen on the right with the Trump versus DeSantis and and the followers in their camp. That's something I will not be participating in in any way, shape, or form because I like both of them, um, and I think they've both done amazing things. Um, and I don't think that it does us any good, especially when I hear people like DeSantis people saying, I won't vote for Trump, and Trump people saying, I won't vote for DeSantis. And it's like, I mean, like, <laughs> what kind of luxurious position do you guys think that you're yeah. in <laughs> that you get to just not vote, yeah. you know? Like, it's like, we can't be infighting because the media no. is going to tear both of them apart, and the left is not going to vote for either one of them. So we have to all get on the same page. Yeah, and we just do. just stop the infighting. <laughs> I think... I think on the right, our individualism is both our strength and our curse. It's true. We're just so all true. a bunch of individuals. The left ain't like that. They all get yeah. on the same page. They all do as they're told. They all vote for the corpse that they're told to vote for. Yeah. And people on the right, for that reason, don't support each other yeah. enough. It's because they're, everyone wants to kind of do their own thing, and they want their own thing to succeed, and then they don't get behind other people. In New York City, uh, last uh, mayoral um, election, we had someone who ra ran for the Republican ticket and one ran for the conservative ticket. So there are basically the, the votes had to split between the two. And right. I don't understand how, who, who let that happen. Now that together they will a bit uh, Eric Adams, but still like something needs to be changed. As Mikey said, uh, we, are, we are too much free thinkers in this on the right. And we have to start uh, standing up together uh, to, to the one candidate uh, in regards to the sentence and, and Trump. I like both, uh, as, as you said. And I would like to see both of them running and whoever the best man to win the primary that's the person that all Republicans should stand behind yes. at the federal, uh, the general election. You know? Don't not vote. You have to go vote. Even if you don't like the person on your party, you have to go vote. This is how Democrats win. We got, well, we, we can't get kicked now. off of YouTube. So. Um, I want to, uh, I'm going to read to you a DM I got on Twitter. I love getting messages like this. And then we'll go to the last question. And then we'll take questions from all of you guys. 
So I got a DM on Twitter on Thursday uh, from a young person um, who said, hey there, I want to walk away, but I'm very anxious and depressed about it. It's hard to actually want to be honest about what, how I'm feeling. Can you give some advice? And I asked, um, can you tell me a little bit more about what you're going through? And then she went on to say, well, I'm actually a lesbian woman who sees so many things going on with the trans community. I want to walk away from it. I'm not going to be labeled a cis woman. I'm a woman born this way. I'm done with watching the government support kids getting out of puberty blockers and sterilizing them. I'm done with so many things it's hard to explain at this point. I'm looking for a little advice on how to emo emotionally deal with this. And then she kind of goes on and on. Um, and to me, I take it as the highest compliment that somebody would want to reach out to me and seek my advice about this because walking away was the greatest decision that I ever made. And so my last question is, how will we free the LGBT community from the radical left? Well, I, I've always been like a lone wolf, I feel like. As I said, I have never needed an LG, uh, LGBT community, and I feel like that's because I don't care what people think of me, and I think that's a, a good advice to give. Like, don't care what people think of you, and um, just stay to your truth, and um, yeah. And, but I think this like community, the walkaway community, is is a good way like to start, um, be more out, being more outspoken, like to find people who believe in the same stuff as you, no matter who they are, LGBT or straight or whatever. I think that people in our community just need to continue to speak out more, like when we're doing events like this, come together and show people that there's so many of us, and I think the numbers are growing and growing to the point that you just made. Um, it's actually not a small group anymore of people who have left the left. We're growing every day. Um, and I think that if you're somebody who doesn't want to be a part of the bullying of the left, if you don't want to be a part of the radical ideology of the left that doesn't agree with your values, um, if you don't want to go along with the racism of the left, of the uh, marginalization of the left, that you're not alone. And there are movements like Walk Away and others, but that you can join and you can be, you, you can be a part of a community that loves you and, and accepts you and supports you. Um, and get on Walk Away Social and share your story. So I, I think that uh, people like uh, this woman uh, is the silent majority. I think the majority of the gay, uh, the people in the gay community uh, feel this way, and they are down, and they and they want to see what what they can do, but they are scared to speak up. They are scared to offend their friends or their family members or to be ostracized uh, for their opinions. Uh, to them, I will say, and this is what she was looking for, right? Like, how how do I walk away? How do I how do I do this change? So the way I see it is that I prefer the hardest truth over the sweetest lie because lying is not productive. Uh, uh, and no matter what you will do, there will be people who would not like it. You cannot win it all. You cannot make yeah. everyone like you. There's always going to be someone who will, who will say something against you. So you rather be true to yourself and how you truly feel and offend some people and rattle some feathers, but then stand up for something that you truly believe in, something that is right. It's always going to be the right side when you're standing up for children and, and protecting children. Uh, so have faith in yourself that what you're doing is the right thing and don't care about people's feelings. And, and what you said, find these groups, walk okay. away, uh, low cabin Republicans, gays against groomers. I started this chapter, uh, I, I'm, I'm the leader of the New York chapter uh, for gays against groomers here and I'm trying to recruit these people who are done with it. And there's something you can do. It doesn't mean that you have to be sitting here next time or have your own social media account and be so offensive as I am. But you can do, <laughs> you can do Anything that starts with just speak with your friends and family, share your opinions, start small, uh, attend protests, attend rallies, attend uh, school board meetings, uh, whatever you can in whatever capacity that you can be to be vocal and speaking up, you will see how you will, you, you will gain that confidence to keep going and be part of a new community uh, that is walking away from the left. I love it. Melissa. Um, I think while you're speaking out, you have to remain affirmative, you have to remain calm, because nobody's gonna listen to somebody scream about how bad the opposite side is. Yeah. 
you Damn have it. to stick. <laughs> except Mikey. Um, you have to stick your ground with what you believe in, and it takes things like this. If everybody here just, you know, went on the internet, let's say, and just said what their ideas were, you you were the one who got me to be open on the internet. Really? Yes. Wow. And we're meeting for the first time today. Four years ago, wow. or six years ago, I came across Walk Away, and I've never, I didn't even walk away, I walked in. I had nothing to do with politics, I didn't care at all. Trump and this man right here got me to speak out on what I believe Amazing. in. So if we Thank could get you. you to do the same thing, you can get somebody else to do it. Thanks, Melissa. You're the reason I'm here, petrified. That's <laughs> you did, she did such a good job, right? <laughs> did you answer? No, I'm about to. All right, tell me. Um, I think we really just need to let people see what is waiting for them on the other side. It is so much better off. These are things, uh, politics are sort of one side of it, but it goes so far beyond that. It really is such a deeply spiritual battle, what we're facing. And even from way before I was a liberal, I, or I mean when I was a liberal, before I walked away, I never felt right with these people. It's not a great culture that they promote to everyone. Um, and I think more gay people just need to realize that the things that they're pushing are in complete opposition to everything that gained you any respect, any equality. They think you can sleep with whoever you want and just change your sexuality. They, they want to, they outright say we're coming for kids. Like these are things that go directly against gay people. Um, and I think for people who have walked away, it's just become loud, become as assertive as you possibly can because leftists are very used to people just bending the knee to them. And they, they absolutely hate people who are successful and do well at things beyond sort of like their, you and I have talked so many times about how this is like sort of the leftist LGBT culture, like they value drug culture, they value drinking culture, they value promiscuity and all this stuff, but God forbid you go out and start your own business and become successful at it, or God forbid you leave the left and become a prominent Republican figure, like how dare you, they hate your guts and they think that you're bad for the community. Well, it's a cult. That's why, like any cult, they want to keep you dependent. They want to keep you in the group. Yeah. That doesn't happen by having a successful independent business. It happens by being the drunk slut at the bar, doing drugs every night, voting Democrat. <laughs> all, in the, all the same thing, basically. <laughs> and we've had this conversation before, too. They, if, if the same standards that the left upholds about gay people were applied to straight people, like if you were a straight... 55 year old man who went out every night doing cocaine and drinking and sleeping with another woman they would say you're a loser yeah but if you're a gay guy they're like you go Fabulous. girl yeah exactly <laughs> and i and i think it's I'll, the bigotry of low expectations yeah. and i think a lot of gay men will get older and realize that they have been sold a lie they have been sold a false bill of goods they have been told that they this culture it, it is just the road to a miserable lonely unhappy life yeah so get the hell out of it as early as you can yes Let's take some questions. <laughs> so uh, well, I, we'd love it if you'd uh, form a line over here because we want to get you on camera while you ask your questions. There's a mark right here, let's put you there. Yeah. Um, Nick and Nate or Paul, uh, can we pass around an uh, email list? Have we gotten emails? We've done that? All right. If anybody here has not signed up for our email list, please do it. I'm not letting you out until you sign up. Yeah, can you line up this way? And while people are getting in line, I'll just remind everybody again, please go on, get on Walkway Social if you haven't already. You can go to walkwaysocial.com. You'll be redirected to load the mobile app if you're an Android user or an Apple user. Uh, it takes just a moment to sign up. You're going to be a part of a community of thousands of patriots sharing their stories about why they walk away or walk with. We want each and every one of you. Then please go to walkwayfoundation.org. Sign up for our email list. We need to hear from you. You may think that you've signed up in the past. Remember, we went through a lot of stuff the last couple of years. So even if you already think you signed up, just do it again. And uh, we'd love for 5,000 patriots to consider becoming a monthly recurring supporter at a rate of just $10 a month for the next year and a half. We'll be in good shape. Wow, this is a lot of questions. Hi, Kara. <laughs> love you. Yes, sir, go ahead. Oh, hi. Can okay, I help you? He's right, hold it. Okay. Hi, my name is, is it on? Can you hear me? My name is Nathaniel Gavronsky, and uh, my question has to do with how pride has changed 
over the years where being a gay man or a lesbian woman, cisgendered, is not enough. And how even the parades and stuff like that are even seen, well, you're not, you're not enough of our cult. You're not, you don't check enough boxes anymore. Where, this is gonna keep going this way, I think. And at what point is it to where you're gonna cannibalize yourself to where the rights and the things that you guys have achieved will be lost and how are you going to fight against that and then um for the life of the party to brandon's uh right um i actually want to go to party with you because that is going to be a riot um i don't know if you don't be, wait what's that you i want to go to parties with you because oh, i think you'd be the life of the party <laughs> i'm very boring <laughs> i doubt that <laughs> Aww. um so anybody want to take that question so i think it's going to keep happening on unless we stop it uh, they want to just keep labeling when, again, we've reached the point of equality. They don't want to be equal. They want to be above. So we have to stick to our grounds and stand up for what we believe in. I, I definitely uh, become concerned about the progress that we... I don't know about losing rights. I don't worry too much about losing rights. I think most of our rights are kind of enshrined. And I do think... Um, I don't think we live in a country anymore where there are people who don't want to allow people to be able to get married or do that. I don't worry about that kind of stuff. I do worry about losing our tolerance. Um, I do worry about fatiguing people to the point where they're just like, I am so tired of hearing about that LGBT community. And frankly, I don't blame them so are we. for feeling that way. Yeah, go ahead. Um, oh, sorry, I forgot what I was saying. Uh, I'm very boring at parties, first of all. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's exactly what you said. They invent new identities every day. Uh, this is a cult, and that's basically what they always do. Followers can never be pure enough. Um, and in this culture that they promote to people, it is all defined by labels and boxes. For people who say that they're fighting against these norms, they hate anything that's outside their norms. Um, so they basically just invent boxes and then try to break your bones stuffing you into them. So I do think I, I do think the backlash is not just coming. I think it's here, and I just hope that people have the sense to separate gay people, lesbians, transsexuals from the alphabet people. Um, they just had a poll showing that uh, acceptance of uh, LGBT people is down in amongst every group of people, every political party, every group across the board. We are all sick of it. Yeah, but see, t again, to be fair, there you never it, know what it's, that is. It's the acronym. It's because yeah. it's the acronym. They may not be sick of lesbian and gay and bisexual people, but they may be sick of the letters on the end, which we are too. Yeah. Um, let's try to get through as many questions as we possibly can. Thank you. And please, you. if you're here, uh, please stick around as long as you can until the end, because when we're done with questions, I'd love to get everybody holding their signs and doing a walkaway chant while we've got everyone here. So p please don't leave if you if you can stay. Go ahead. Hi. Um, my name is Helene, and I was just wondering what your advice would be to promoting media literacy amongst especially LGBT people, because for instance, I notice a lot of people will repost things by AJ+. AJ+, is Al Jazeera owned by Qatar. Qatar, you can be imprisoned or killed for being gay. Why are they promoting progressive things in the United States, and why are LGBTQIA people reposting Qatari propaganda? How can we stop this, and how can we promote intelligent, clear media literacy amongst our public? Amazing question. Do you want to go ahead? You also have the, the many groups that are uh, uh, saying that they are LGB uh, for Palestine and uh, <laughs> another location where you cannot be gay. Um, what we what we have, we, we already established these groups that are fighting this whole ideology. Uh, with literacy, we have uh, we, uh, we have with Gays Against Groomers, we specifically uh, created uh, our, a blog, uh, and we are. On, I think on a daily, uh, is Michael here? I think on a daily basis we have our writers contributing content and giving that, balancing out that information, all that misinformation that's coming out. Uh, and it will take education, it will take for more people to do it in order for, for, the, for that shift. For people to understand that no, you cannot uh, back up countries like Qatar or, or, uh, or Palestine or Gaza uh, because y as a gay person you can't even, uh, you cannot be you cannot visit these countries if you wanna if you wanna stay alive. 
So, you know, join, once again, it is, it is all about joining. These, these stuff are already, hap we already established these uh, media, small outlets for now, uh, with outspoken also by, uh, by low cabin Republicans. So these are, these are the, this is the answer uh, to, to fight this AJ, AJ Plus and all the other media that are promoting this propaganda and, and indoctrination. I think it's also important that if you know something like this is a fact, point it out to them. Write a comment, because even if they delete the comment, they will have read it. Right. So they might look into it more. Yeah, and to, the, yeah, and to that point, I would say try to remember, too, because I, believe me, I, I know it can feel overwhelming uh, that there are so many indoctrinated and brainwashed people, and it's like there's so many people you feel like you just can't get through to them. Pretty much everyone here is living proof that people can change their minds if you stick with it and, and stay at it. I mean... I always kind of say that my experience walking away was like there were little seeds that people had been planting for years and years and years. And yeah, I was oftentimes nasty and rejected those seeds and spit them back in people's faces. But when the, the final straw that broke the camel's back happened for me, it was like it was almost like in the movies where you see your whole life flash before your eyes. I started to just think about all the things people had told me for years and it's like the puzzle came so clear for me you know we can actually break people from the propaganda and the brainwashing not everyone i mean there are always going to be people that we can never reach but i think that we can reach enough people where we cross the tipping point and we become the majority and we are getting there so just never underestimate uh, the value, like Melissa said, of engaging in those conversations, making that comment. And you might walk away feeling empty. You know, you might walk away going like, I didn't get through to that person at all or change their mind, but you planted a seed. Um, I think you really just need to spotlight, put a giant spotlight on every single lie that they tell. And hopefully for people, it would, will be kind of death by a thousand cuts. Um, yeah. It's very interesting that places like Al Jazeera or the CCP and in other instances are pushing this stuff here. Sort of like the intersectionality of authoritarian ideologies. Um, but yeah, I think hopefully people just have some sense, like point out to them. They now say that they're pushing, the, that they're going to have the underground railroad for LGBTQ people <laughs> out of Florida. And it's a state of emergency. Oh, and I think something that's really useful with that is satire. Um, I forget her name offhand, but there's this great uh, account on Twitter that does like uh, letters from this is day one of the genocide, the state of emergency, <laughs> day two of the trans genocide. So yeah, just point out how ridiculous these things are. But I, I really do think that the tide is turning because lately, if you look on social media at any, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, whatever, any time that they post some of these things, you look at the comments, they are 100% negative. Yeah, that's true. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm, I'm a good friend of Rachel's and um, I'm so grateful that I attended this. I've always considered myself in the middle, but you know, after hearing you guys, it sounds like this is the voice of reason. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And I think my, my question for the panel, I know you guys are all tech savvy and you're embedded in, in this algorithmic age that we have. Um, would you, why is it that there is a rise and why do we worship cringe now more than beauty? And I think, you know, the, the QIA, I think their validation comes from this cringe. And, and you know, it, it, I feel like it just perpetuates this loneliness crisis. I mean, it takes two to get attracted. So if the other lesbian becomes transgender, so, so that lesbian doesn't have a partner anymore. So it's like, you know, there's, there's this shift in attraction. So th there's that perpetuation of loneliness. But I think more the question, my question is, why is there this cringe culture? Ooh, well, I, 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 when it comes to like um, glamorizing cr cringeness, is that a word? Well, it is now. I think it's because there's some groups of people who really want to feel like they're better than everyone else. Like, oh, I can accept Dylan Mulvaney. I see Dylan Mulvaney as a woman because that's good. How that's how good I am, even though he's clearly not. Um, so, so it's like it's a way of feeling better about yourself. I feel like, and um, yeah, it's yeah, it is cringe. 
I see it almost as like a, a, a subdivision of the socialist mindset that they're trying to equalize that all things are as good or as equal as other things. And we have to be comfortable and okay with saying, no, they're not. Being fat is not better than being thin. You, you know, being obese is not better than being fit. Uh, and on and on and on and on. And to me, I don't know exactly what you're referring to as cringe, but that's the first thing that I think of is now that there's this push to normalize obesity and make it seem like it's a beautiful thing or normalize all these. And it's, we have to be, and in my mind, it's kind of this, this mindset like, I don't want to eat healthy, I don't want to go to the gym, I don't want to take care of myself, but I want to be viewed as just as beautiful as a person who eats healthy or goes to the gym or takes good care of themselves. And it's, no, you can't have <laughs> what other people have unless you're willing to work for it and do something about it. So to me, I think it's like a, a, a piece of the socialist mindset. And you can get thin. Not everybody has a thyroid condition, okay? <laughs> Stop it with that. That's always their excuse. It's always, I have a thought, no you don't, bitch, you're fat. <laughs> <laughs> Just eat less, it's, you'll be fine. Just eat less. Yes, sir. Uh, hello. Um, this, isn't, this question isn't directed to anyone in particular. Um, so considering how we're all very well outspoken people here today, um, have you lost any friends? Have you dealt with any form of ostracization from your previous friend group before you walked away? Yes, absolutely. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> I was uh, the captain of the New York, uh, I was a cap captain of a pool team at the New York Gay Pool League. It's a league that's been existing for like almost 40 years in the city, oh. pool, billiards. I was playing for seven years with that same team and I had all these gay friends in, the, in that group and every time they were bashing Trump, I was just like, oh, I'm just gonna go out for a smoke and <laughs> you know, just not being part of the conversation because for me it wasn't about politics. They found out in, in, in 21 uh, that I'm a Republican or identify as a, or like I'm a part with a Republican group uh, because they saw a photo of me at uh, Pride Ride, which is a law cabinet Republicans, the Pride event that we do. We do it Pride the right way. But they saw a photo of me in that crowd and they sent it to everyone in that, in that bar and that was enough for the whole group to completely cancel me and kind of like ostracize me for that group. And we're like, well, we're not comfortable with you being the captain of our team anymore. Like you can't be. Now I never even spoke with them about my 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 views, my my political views, they and if care. I have, they will hate me even more. But you know, for them, it was just enough uh, to see that, and then I was uh, out of, out of that community, out of that group. I lost friends. There was there was one 70 year old uh, gay man who him and I were very close, and he completely ignores my existence. I, I tried many times to reach out to him and have a conversation. Uh, so. I've lost few friends, but I learned that uh, when you're speaking up for yourself and you not you not you know when you try to get out of the conservative closet, which by the way has been way harder than coming out of the gay closet 20 years ago. <laughs> so you are losing friends, but you're gaining new friends. And some friends, like Patrick, that asked the last question, is one of my best friends. And when we met, he was a liberal, but he's one of the only friends who I can have respectful debates with. And thankfully now he's leaning more to the right. But <laughs> You know, you, you, and I met and I started going to all of these organizations and found new people, new friends, uh, better friends. Uh, so yes, uh, being, being outspoken, you're gonna lose some people in your circles, but I think it's, it's for a good reason. You know, these people weren't really your friends to begin with. I lost almost every friend I had. Um, I, when I, before I started Walk Away, I, I had lost like 90% of my friends because there was about a year that I started being outspoken on social media. And nobody knew who I was at that point. I mean, it was just, I was just po posting and mostly just questions uh, that's, that could be interpreted as um, favorable to Trump. Um, and about 90% of my friends turned their back on me. And then when I started Walk Away, uh, the remaining 10% was <laughs> out the door, with the exception of a few. I mean, I probably maybe have three or four or five who stuck around. But yeah, I mean, the life that I once had is, is over, for sure. Oh yeah, same, I lost every, except one because we agree on it. But other, other than that, every friend I ever had, um, overnight I became a white supremacist, fascist, homophobic, literally self Hitler, self-loathing, of course. I always tell them only homophobic is true. The rest, not at all. Um, <laughs> 
can I just say real quick, these people are so nuts. They're so nuts. I mean, they literally, especially in the LGBT community, they truly believe that we're living in like 1930s Germany times. They do. And and they'll be like, I hope you know that, you know, like right now you're, you're kissing up to all these people on the right, but pretty soon they're going to come for you next. And, and the fact that you stood up for them, it's not going to help you. I'm like... Uh, have you been watching Schindler's List too much? Like, what? People also why say. Do, wh- why do they think that's going on? People that also say, board. oh, enjoy the gas chambers. Like, dude, <laughs> chill. I had big plans. We were promised the gay concentration camps we under were. Trump. Yeah, Trump I had was big already plans office, for them. Right? I was going to meet lots of guys. It was we were going to lose be weight. Party. Yeah, it was going to be great. We, w- we would have had the best camp in there. <laughs> Trump was already in office for four years, and none of what they promised us happened. No. The, the opposite happened. More gay people voted for him in 2020. Right. <laughs> right. That's, right. The what, opposite. What? But, so, I, yeah. sorry. And then also the Republican, we, we saw, uh, we, we broke records of acceptance on the right. Uh, Republicans are more, uh, have, well, until we, they started going after the children, but they've been more accepting of same-sex marriage, about like 70% or yes. something, which is, which is amazing. And it's exactly the opposite of what they're, they're telling you, that they feel more agreeing, that they're telling I've, I've got that message. Yeah. I've got, I get these messages, too. They're like, I'm, trading, I'm a traitor to my community, and yeah. what do you think is going to happen? They're going to call after you next. And, yeah. and I'm like, you know what? If it will, uh, if it will take to, to, to protect the children for me to lose the right to marry my same-sex marriage, then be it. I don't care. Right. I care more about protecting the children. Let's get through more questions. Did you want to go ahead and say something? You're okay? Okay. Hello, my name is Matthew, I'm 34 years old, and I have a few concerns and two questions. Okay. I went to the log cabin meeting on a few th- on Wednesday where I saw Brandon, Rachel, and Charles Moran pointed out that the acceptance for the LGBT people are declining among the Republican Party, and now there are laws that they're trying to push us back, like for the trans people, and I've noticed with some conservative commentators, they're like starting to res- like turn our back on us and turn on us, saying that we don't belong here. And like going to the 2024 elections, um, I, I don't. I'm concerned that we won't be as recognized as we were in the past few years. And regarding. And regarding the Santis's don't say gay law, which expanded to 12th grade, I didn't have a problem with it last year when it was up to third grade, but during puberty is when people figure out their sexual orientation as I did, but kept quiet. But, and, and my question is, do you, like if for a normal person who thinks that they just have same-sex attractions and when I was growing up, there were just like these left-leaning, now they're super woke, but how can we, do you believe it's possible to, to do outreach for high schoolers who are sexually confused but don't want to be part of that movement at, as I never did? And how would you answer concerns about being thrown out of the community? I don't think that high school is too young to talk about these things. And I did not think that um, I supported the parental rights and education bill from DeSantis again when it was third grade and under. Um, I, now it's been expanded to like high school or it, did it actually go through or did it's they're trying to? Yeah, I, I heard somewhere, well, you, the only place you could talk about is uh, sex ed, but there are other states that are very more conservative, like yeah. in the deep south, like Alabama, Arkansas, et cetera. But it's, it's an, uh, to me, that's an overreach. Um, I, I don't think that there's, any, I mean, to your point, you know, most people, by the time they're 14, 15, 16, 17 years old, they have a pretty clear understanding, or at least are beginning to ask these questions and these conversations. I don't think, I mean, look, gay people exist, we're in the world, transgender people exist, we're in the world, or transsexual people, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I don't think that it uh, does any favors to anybody to deprive people people of having these conversations when they're old enough to have these conversations. Thank you, but regarding, my question was outreach for, for adolescents who are confused and ashamed of their sexuality as I was 20 years ago for them to reach out to you. Because when I was, there wasn't that much of a movement when I was in school. Like I'm talking about today when they go to 
public schools, which are both indoctrination camps. Yeah. yeah. So I, that's my question. Hopefully they find all of our YouTube channels. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I would say uh, I, w I was also I also realized I was gay when I was 13 years old. Uh, I didn't tell immediately everyone. I didn't know anyone. There was no representation. We didn't talk about it at school, but I was still able to figure it out. So it's not that we need this indoctrination at school to let the gay kids know that they're fine. Uh, what we need is more focus on the parents, because you know if you want, they they are saying that they're trying to protect the children and from the abusive parents who are not you know affirm their uh, their sexuality or their gender. So f instead of doing all this indoctrination at school, uh, fo focus on the parents. Do you, uh, after school activities for the parents. I don't see any any reason for the school uh, to in uh, to introduce these materials to children. What is what's the educational value of talking about gay sex, which that's what they do. I, I don't see any. Uh, and for the person that that 13 year old, what she did. She went to the LGBT community center. That's where they, you find the answers. You want to you want you want to find your community. That's where you're going, uh, and you don't need it to come to your school, because once again, we are like about seven percent of population. We do, we really don't need uh, these uh, education, the sex, uh, gay sex education to 100 percent of the students, which majority of them are straight. We're I, gonna uh, go to another question. Okay. Uh, well, I just wanted to say real quick. I think I disagree a little bit with what you said, and I would think okay, I we can disagree. It. Or no, I mean him. Uh, I always disagree with him. <laughs> Not really. Um, I think I agree in theory that it's it shouldn't be too young to just say these are the facts of life. But what's happening in the schools is so insidious. They are cutting off body parts. They are brainwashing people that I think if this is what it takes to get that out, then I think until this group shows that they can be trusted to just say facts, then I don't really have much of a problem with getting rid of all of it outside of sex ed, I think. But that's the pr problem again with the woke ideologies. They can corrupt every institution they get into. So sex ed doesn't even mean sex ed anymore. I just want to say, I went to 16 years of Catholic school. The straight girls and the gay girls, we didn't have sex ed. So we all figured it out. <laughs> it's almost we like it's knew. innate. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Uh, Thank you all very much. And Melissa, I agree with you. I'm, I'm one of those older gay men, right? That people don't think they exist. But um, <laughs> I am so grateful that, w that I am tolerated and I find myself accepted. You know, I find myself accepted. I, do, I am concerned about the kids in Ghana, the kids in Iraq. They're, it is still not globally freed. Right. So I still think we need to outreach about self-esteem for gay people and lesbians. And I wanna thank Kara Castronova who went out of her way to make sure that everybody in the medical freedom movement in this city knew about this. She, she, she wrote to me, she said, can you please pass this out? And Kara has been very active, if you don't know her, in defending and working for the freedom of all those young men who were imprisoned for the January 6th protests. Yeah. Woo! Want, and my, my question, my question is, and, and there are many people here who are just so savvy about what's going on. What's underneath this? What do you want to talk about? What's underneath the Black Lives Matter movement? What's underneath the medical freedom? What's underneath the injections? What's underneath this stuff? It's not just a party. What is it? What do you want to talk about that? Why is this happening? I, you know, Barack Obama said that it was his goal to fundamentally change our country. And I think that this is basically a, a movement that has been hiding for many, many decades. It's not as, as much as it feels like it's all happening right now. I think that the, these are seeds that have been planted for generations that are now coming to harvest. And I think it's a Marxist movement to destabilize every aspect of our society to destroy our country. I think there's also uh, communism. Uh, we connecting the two, uh, the the pandemic. Uh, there's as, uh, to me, it seems like an effort of the population. Uh, when you're looking at uh, how uh, with with the virus and then with the vaccines. Uh, uh, it was clear how they, they were lying to people about the vaccines, mm -hmm. trying to get as many people to take it uh, or, or force them to take it. Um, 
And once again, there are like there's some depopulation efforts with trans in the, the kids. Uh, uh, giving puberty blockers to children is sterilizing them. These kids are not gonna have children. Uh, they people who would do bottom surgeries will not have children. Um, so once this is all kind of like a, con a connection, and in the way also they creating that this enslaved uh, generation uh, to to easily take over. Uh, it's been pushed also by the UN. Uh, the UN also, by the way, uh, start trying to normalize pedophilia, uh, and uh, the, the WEF uh, they cr trying to 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 dismantle all these countries from within uh, and to create this one world organization where they're just gonna we all gonna be uh, we gonna own nothing and we're gonna be happy. Basically, that's what they want us. To Once do. they took away our medical freedom, they took away all of our freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Watch what happens. Team Pure Blood. Yeah. I just want to. Yeah. I, I just want to quickly remind everyone, please, if you can, stick around because when we're done with just another question or two, we're going to do the walk away chant together. So, on video. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, my name is Hernan. I am a gay man from Venezuela yeah. who knows a lot about these all these m situations. I saw this. 20 plus years ago happening in Venezuela, and now I'm seeing here in a big scale, so it's scarier than. And uh, also, I want to clarify something about uh, Donald Trump. Yeah, but uh, let me clarify something. I, well, I was waiting there, so I have the right. <laughs> and uh, he was the honor of, uh, for us, the gay Super Bowl, which was Miss Universe. And everybody forgot about that. And sure. right after he Miss became, um, Miss yeah, and right after he became a, a presidential candidate, everybody forgot in my community about that. And I, I met Donald Trump in, in different Miss Universe that I attend, and he was the nicest person in the world. And right after he became this Nazi, and who we need to be scared, or scary for. Trump 2024, a thousand percent. Let's go. Um, so now, I'm sorry. Um, why is it so difficult for me, who I, I has been in a group like the Freedom Fighter group for over three years, and the God Squad also, who are they? They are here. And yeah, my people are here. I am the only gay in, I think I'm the only, no, no, it's another gay in, in, that, in that group. Have you guys met? That, uh, now, well, now I found you guys. This is the first time I feel like a fish in the water. Because Welcome I am home. my people. Aww. So my question is, why is it so difficult? to reach you guys. I, I has been trying since last year to reach both groups, the walk away and the gays uh, against groomers, and I haven't succeed to contact you. So please be more approachable with people like me. We are desperate, and like me, we are probably more out there who are scared and being rejected for are uh, my last commu my old community. I don't have friends anymore. Yeah. I have no f gay friends. Yeah. They look at me as a... Uh, now you do. Yeah, like you said. Yeah. And so, please, it's a question and also it's a, a suggestion. Sure. Be more approachable. Yeah, can I address that? Yes. Okay. So, um, I, like, I, I don't mean to make it about money, but it really is the truth. Like, we don't have enough help. And that's true because we can't afford it. Like we need to be able to reach as many people. We need to be manning every email box that we have and every social media box that we have. We do the very best that we can. It's myself, I have a tiny little team. They're all here in this room tonight. There's like three guys. Um, and in addition to that, we have a handful of volunteers. We really try to do the best that we can. I, you use the word approachable. I don't think we're not approachable. We can't keep up. Yeah. And that's and I would you're probably in the same position, but you can speak for yourself. Um, honestly, there are 74 million people in this country who voted for Donald Trump. If those people were contributing a dollar 
a month to help organizations, we wouldn't be so short staffed. We would be able to do more events. We'd be able to reach more people. We'd be able to answer our email boxes. And so that's the biggest, it's not that we don't want to. We, it, it's, it's, a, it's a manpower problem, I think. Uh, I'm just unapproachable. <laughs> I, <laughs> I uh, agree with everything Brandon said. I would like to also add uh, that our, most of our presence and how we're trying to reach people is via social media, and we are being censored. Yes. I was having so much hard time trying yes. to post. Every post that I tried to post of Brandon of this event, my app was crashing down on me. Like it was loading, and I was not able to to load. So we have big tech interference with 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 the with the following that we're trying to build and right. growing our communities. Uh, and I will add to it that many people hate our communities and trying to infiltrate us. We have enemies who are trying to you know trying to sign up for Gays Against Groomers in order to take it down from within. So we have to be you know very pro take precautions in order to uh, vet the people that we. Uh, bring it on board and it takes a while because we don't have the re enough resources and enough people to do so but I if you try to talk with me after this you'll see I'm very approachable thank you and, yeah. and, and, and please I'm still us. not <laughs> <laughs> me and Mikey will be upstairs alone <laughs> Um, yeah, let's uh, hey, let's, let's I, I think close I'm out the with last person. But um, I this event is so important. Thank you, Brandon, and everyone for doing it. Um, as an activist that's been in the community, in the medical freedom community, you know, doing all the rallies and everything, I noticed that we all love, like we all have causes that we want to champion and fight for. And I know right now a lot of the activists in the city are fighting against the drag queen story hours. And I write for the Gateway Pundit, and I read the comments, and I'm noticing that. Um, um, let me read what I wrote. I feel like we're falling into the trap of overgeneralizing with our speech when it comes to language regarding LGBT, and I fear we will ostracize some of our allies, including obviously gay people, um, that don't know that we're not, that's not what we're about. And I think it's similar to the trap that was set for us in the 2020 election with Black Lives Matter, where the, that movement was hijacked. And you know, people just made this perception that people are racist because they're not supporting Black Lives Matter. I right. think now people are saying, oh, just because you don't support LGBT, Q, and whatever, you're not supporting gay people. So I, my question is, and I really am encouraging you guys to just really put some real thought into, I don't know if it's like a, a, a thought that or a, a new phrase that we need to come up, but we need to come up with ways to differentiate clearly in our speech that there's a huge difference between our brothers, sisters, and the gay, bisexual, transgender, and uh, community that's different than supporting the transgender agenda of mutilating children, um, taking uh, women's championships away in sports. There's such a big difference, and I don't know if it's, it's stepping away and saying, okay, we support the gay, lesbian, bisexual, and even transgender community, but we're opposed to the mutilization of children. We're opposed to uh, taking away championships from women and things that women are, from erasing women. Um, and I just think that's really important for people here, like Jesus, like um, so many others that, can I, can I just finish? That's it? okay. <laughs> it's so important. It's okay. It's okay. No, because I, I know what, I, I talk to people on the street. I work also for Newsmax, and rep, I'm representing myself right now, not anything I work for. And people need to watch your speech. Like, I hear you guys. Like, some people hear that your, your, your speech, be careful with it when you're saying, we're against pride, we're against gay, lesbian, and what? I know you don't mean that. So just be thoughtful when you say that and just try to, because I know who everybody in this room is. I know most everyone here. I know you're tolerant people. I know that you accept gay people. I know that you're against the transgender agenda. So please just be mindful of your speech, because I've noticed it's become a problem. And don't fall into the Democrat trap to ostracize more voters voting Democrat, because that's not what we want. Not Woo! That. Great I point. Love it. Great point. <laughs> now that is a gay up. icon right there. <laughs> yeah. It's Thank very you, important to just denounce the extremism of any kind of group. Because yes. even right extremism, left extreme, extremism, gay extremism, it's just that's not what we're about. We're about the American life. Right. Well, and it's important to recognize, too, that that is why they're doing this. This is why they're hijacking minority communities. It's why they hijack Black Lives Matter. It's why they hijack, because it is a trap.
It's a trap because if you object to it and if you allow yourself to get frustrated, and I understand the frustration, uh, you're going to be cast as a bigot and you're going to be cast as uh, homophobic or transphobic or racist or whatever. And the left is going to use that going into the next election cycle to convince Gen Zers or minorities that they don't have a place at the table on the right with anybody because look how these people act. Look what they say. They Excellent think by point, Karen. Calling Cara. you names that it's going to just change your mind. And for some people, it, do, it does because yeah. some people can't handle it. Yeah. But stick. Stick to your convictions. But that, oh, sorry. That's why I started my YouTube channel, because I wanted to show people that even though I'm a trans person, I don't support the trans agenda, which are two different things. Um, so, yeah, I, I agree with you. I say, I say that it, there's never 100%, so you can never say all people are X or Y, because there's always going to be the exception. And the exception, in specifically in regards to this movement, is Gays Against Groomers. Once again, if you haven't heard of us, it's a coalition of gays, lesbian, bisexual, and trans people who are done with the indoctrination and the sexualization of children under our name. Because they are trying, they hijacked our community and using us as shields to do so. So if uh, if there are groups like Gays Against Groomers and other groups uh, who are standing up, join these groups and, and empower their voices and create more YouTube accounts like Marcus and I, who are there to show that not all gay people think the same. And it's okay to be against uh, Drunk Queen Story Hour for children, and it doesn't make you against gay people because it's, the two are not connected. And uh, I just wanted to respond to what you said. Uh, to go back to what I was saying about the right is so individualistic, which is a good thing, but I keep hearing lately about what the right needs to be, how we should, what positions we should have on these things. The important thing is we need to be a coalition. We don't all have to agree on things. We need to see who the real enemy is. These people locked you in your homes, shut your businesses, muzzled your children before feeding them hormones and cutting off body parts. So we can all have our different views on things, but we need to be able to come together against these crazy bastards. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So again, thank you all so much for coming. If you look on your seat, you're gonna see that you all have a walk away sign. The first, yeah, could we get uh, Nick and Nate, uh, could we get some signs for over here for the speakers, for us? Now, the first thing I need to tell you, because this happens literally every time, make sure you're holding your sign the right way up. <laughs> yeah. And then what we'd love for you to do is all come in closer, uh, please, get together. We want you all to get really nice and close with each other. Paul, if you're over there, please encourage everyone over there to come on over here. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nick and Nate, let's get some signs, please. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Can you, can you get everyone to come down here? I feel like Dignity is not the one for me to <laughs> Okay. So do me a favor, you guys, kind of step back where the seats are and just kind of cluster together, nice and tight. Face me. Yep. Yeah, face me. Yeah. <laughs> but back up a little bit. What? Oh, we're looking at this camera? Oh, yeah, we can do that. I was going to film it myself, but do you know if Luke is filming on that camera? Walk away! Walk away! 